to me, it's just quick math, yeah? That's all science is to me, and the people, it's what I love about doing these events, I see some familiar faces, people have come back, so I know there's people in here that have seen me break down science in a very simplified way. But I'm curious, because I do see some unfamiliar faces. Who's never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before? Show of hands. Wow. Wow. For those people who have never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before, I've got one thing to say to you. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. So what are you going to learn today? So I'm going to my car. It was it was humorous as well. So and, and the way the information was broken down was amazing. And I definitely will be coming back to more of the hidden science <laughs> um, events because yeah, I learned so much and I'm just so grateful to, to be able to be a part of it and experience it. Oh, well, that's very good. Very interesting. Really good. Very inspiring. And I would recommend it to anyone to come. We definitely and we will come back again. Absolutely. Well, I thought the event was fantastic. Um, I thought the delivery was fantastic. The presentation, the breaking down of complex ideas so that everybody could feel um, in involved and can participate was exceptional and the interaction with the um, video material was superb. Hidden science man, hidden science. The more we start to study self, study our own history, the more we'll start to realize that gang culture or gang violence is not black culture. It is not black culture. And the more we start to study our own history, the more we'll truly gain knowledge of self. And when we gain knowledge of self, we'll naturally drop anything that doesn't pertain to self. We'll naturally drop anything that doesn't pertain to self. Like we'll be walking around and just drop it. And people will be like, uh, excuse me, you dropped something. <laughs> what? What did I drop? I think you dropped your culture. My culture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, let me check. Hold on a second. Uh, torture. 
gang violence, war, rape, pedophilia, cannibalism. Nah, this is your culture, right? <laughs> I picked it up by mistake. <laughs> Take it back. All right. Welcome. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, Econ, if you can use the panelist link, bro, so you can come in as a panelist. Let me check. Oh, no, you're there. All right, wicked. All right, enough respect. Everyone's here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Greetings to everyone. I saw people saying that they were from Canada, from Paris. Welcome everyone from all over the world. So much to, you know, share with you tonight. So I'm just going to go straight into it. Before we start, I just want to tell you what the Hidden Science Academy's got coming up. So I'm just going to share my screen and tell you what we've got coming up. So if this is your first time with the Hidden Science Academy, the Hidden Science Academy, Academy is myself, Leo Marshall, and I run it with my sister, Vinika Marshall. This is her here. And we do have a small team of people that help us out as well. So the Hidden Science Academy, we put on events, we put on webinars, we put on courses, and we was going to do retreats as well. Unfortunately, something happened last year, so we couldn't do retreats. But when everything opens back up again, we'll be doing retreats as well. So this is um, my sister, Vinika Marshall, she's a best-selling author. This is one of her books. She's actually got two books on Amazon right now. This is one of her books, Black British History. Very powerful book. Big up the people that have bought that book. And big up the people that keep on asking me about her second book. Her second book is out on Amazon right now, but I'll let her talk to you about that later. So we run the Hidden Science Academy. If you want to follow us on the socials, you can follow us on Instagram at the Hidden Science Academy. You can follow us on Facebook, the Hidden Science Academy, and you can watch some of our previous lectures and events on vimeo.com forward slash the Hidden Science Academy. Now, if you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram at the scientist online. That's at the scientist online. They call me the scientist because of how I break down science. And let me just tell you what we've got coming up. So the Hidden Science of Black Holistic Health, these are free lectures, webinars, and they're once every month now. So and they're always gonna fall on the 16th. So on the 16th of every month, we're gonna be doing this. And once you've signed up to one, you're, you're signed up to all of them. So don't worry if you miss one. But yeah, you guys can ask questions with regards to your health, with regards to well being, with regards to nutrition, all that sort of stuff, yeah? So very powerful stuff. Big up the people that are adding me on Instagram now, I see you. So that's at the scientists online. I see quite a few of you adding me on Instagram, I'll accept in a second. All right. This is what we've got coming up next week, Wednesday, the secret science of CMOS. This is going to be a very powerful webinar, very, very powerful webinar. And uh, my sister will put the link to all of these um, events in the chat in a second. But the secret science of CMOS, very powerful webinar. You don't want to miss this one. Wednesday, the 20th of January at 7 p.m. We're just going to be breaking down all the science of CMOS. Does it really have the 92 you know, they always say it has 92 of the 102 minerals that your body needs for optimal health. Is this true? Can it really get rid of mucus out of your body? Is this true? Can it really heal wounds after surgery? Is this true? We're going to break down all of that science on Wednesday, the 20th of January. So don't miss that. And Saturday, the 30th of January, we're going to be doing Black Solutions. There's quite a few things happening this year with regards to law. Things are changing. The, the government's going to be imposing certain you know, um, recommendations that we should take. So we need to know our rights. So this is going to be a very powerful event. We're going to have the people who book onto this one, you're going to have access to professional lawyers and people in the industry that can give us some information with regards to uh, what we can do with this year, because this year and next year is going to get quite sticky for us. So we need some solutions. So this one's going to be a very powerful event as well. And then next month, we've got the secret science of sickle cell. Don't want to miss this one. The secret science of sickle cell. We always hear about sickle cell and how black people are more likely to suffer from it and all of this stuff. But what's the truth? We've got a very powerful doctor, a black doctor by the name of Dr. Mark Walcott. He's going to be breaking down the science on this one. So you don't want to miss that. 
Thank you. Enjoyed the melanin chat. Yeah, we myself and brother Joe Dash, we did a melanin chat on Instagram live yesterday. So big up the people who were tuned into that one. Let me just put the link tree link in there. Actually, I'll do it. Let me see if I can grab it right now. Yep. All right. So if you want to sign up to any of those events, all you need to do is click on this link that I'm about to paste right now. So that's the link and you can sign up to any of those events that I just went through. So I'm gonna post it a couple of times. So you guys get it. That's the link and you can sign up to all of those events, yeah? And please share that link with your friends and family. Very powerful events we've got coming up. All right, now today is all about um, black holistic health and us giving you information so you can make better decisions with your health going forward, especially this year. So we've got some very, very powerful special guests. We've got uh, Charles is going to be joining us from Ankara. Ankara is a black owned um, supplement comp company. They deal with Moringa, red algae, purple sea moss, they're black owned supplement company, very powerful. People are always asking me like, what supplements do you take? And I usually say, I don't really take any supplements. However, if I am going to, like Moringa powder or anything, I'm gonna get it from them. So Charles is gonna be joining us from Ankara a bit later. We've also got Ecom from Eat to Live Not to Die. Very powerful brother. He wrote the book, Eat to Live Not to Die. When you see it, you'll probably be like, oh yeah, no, I've seen that before. So we're gonna have that guy, Ecom, he's gonna be on in just a sec. But first up, we've got a very, very special guest by the name of Lyndon Wizard. Now, for those who don't know who Lyndon is, He's a chef who was able to reverse his own type two diabetes in 105 days. So if you know anyone, or if you are someone who suffers from type two diabetes, you wanna take notes right now, yeah? You, I'm sure every single person that's in this webinar right now knows someone who suffers from type two diabetes, yeah. has been diagnosed with type two diabetes. So this information is gonna be extremely powerful. Now here's how it's gonna to work today. Each speaker, will speak for 15 or 20 minutes, yeah? And then after that, you guys can ask them whatever questions you want. Now, here's what, how we're gonna do it. We do have the Q&A as part of the, the Zoom um, section. So you guys can put questions in there. However, anytime we do webinars, not all the questions get answered because there's so many questions. So if you want to ask a question, either raise your hand, yeah? You can, there's, there's a way you can raise your hand in here, or just put in the chat, um, I'd like to ask a question and I can make, I can unmute your mic so you can ask the question, yeah? I can actually unmute your mic or I can make you a panelist so you can ask the question. So I wanna hear you guys ask questions as opposed to reading through the, ch the, the Q and A because it just takes way too long. There's like a hundred uh, questions by near the end of it. So if you guys wanna ask questions, raise your hand or say, can I ask a question? And then we'll get you on live and then you can ask your question live. All right, over to my first special guest, Lyndon, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm here for you, Leon, I'm here for you, guy. 100%, 100%. Take it away, man. So thank you very much for having me on uh, the uh, uh, Science event tonight, which is awesome on so far, and every time I do, I'm learning more from Leon as well. You know, because I all done, I reversed my type two diabetes uh, in 105 days naturally, and I'm going to give you a bit more about that in a second. But today's about answering lots of the questions about how I done it and what I done. But let me give you some statistics. Statistics first. Um, when I was diagnosed with type two diabetes, I didn't know what diabetes was. Okay, I didn't know what type two diabetes was, and there's a lot of people out there. Who, who know what type 2 diabetes is, yeah? And for the ones who don't know what type 2 diabetes is, yeah, okay? You, I was in exactly that same position when I was diagnosed. Right now, there's 4.7 million people in the UK with diabetes, yeah? There's about 400 million people worldwide with diabetes. There's probably a country, is every single country in the world has probably got a, a related diabetic uh, disease or an infection or someone's got diabetes in every single country around the world. And that's what the statistics say, yeah? Every 22 seconds, 
somebody loses a lower limb from diabetes, losing a toe, maybe a finger, a foot, a leg. That's every 22 seconds. Every six seconds, somebody dies from diabetes. Yeah, somewhere around the world, every six seconds, somebody dies from diabetes. And this is statistics uh, that are facts. Yeah, when I was diagnosed, yeah, okay, the, I found out that they talk about the, the black ethnic minority people are more, um, how can I put it, more designed to have diabetes. You know, um, they're more prone to have diabetes. But the good thing about it, if I knew that when I was diagnosed, yeah, I don't think I would have done what I'd done. I think I just would have gone with the, with the normal way of reversing the type two diabetes. So to simplify my story, okay, I was diagnosed type two diabetes, October, 2015. Um, for, for me, I was a chef for over 30 years. I've worked in many different establishments, hotels, restaurants. And therefore, I was cooking healthy meals and not so healthy meals for different clients uh, when I was working in different industry. But when I was diagnosed, my HbA1c, just to simplify, the HbA1c is a blood test that they give you that measures your last three months of your blood glucose level, sugar levels in your blood system. Yeah. If it's 42 and below, you're okay. If you're 42 and above, yeah, that means you're diabetic. That's when I was diagnosed. That's what they told me, all right? When I was diagnosed, mine was 92. My HbA1c was 92. They also done a pinprick when they took some blood out of your finger and they test that uh, instantly for you, yeah? When they tested my blood glucose, mine was 15.9 and it was supposed to be five. Five and below or five, that's the normal level, all right? So at that time, the only reason why I knew it was serious is because when my doctor looked at me and told me I was diabetic, this expression on their face was, you're in the danger zone of being diabetic. You know, you're on your way to hospital if you don't do something about it. So the first thing that they did with me, they went like that. The arm literally moved like that and they went for medication. Yeah, they said, we need to put your medication. Yeah, and the medication was metformin. And at that time, I'm thinking medication, I've never been on any kind of medication in my life before. So I don't want to take anything now. So I'm thinking to myself, have I heard of diabetes before? And it's funny how the mind works when you recollect things, when something triggers your mind. And the first time I remember when I heard the word diabetes was when my, my friend's mother was sick and I went to visit her. And when I went to visit her, the first thing she said to me, Lyndon, the sugar get me. Yeah, she said, the sugar get me. I thought to her, what does that mean? What's the sugar get me? And a few months later, she passed away through diabetes. And that's when I found out she died from diabetes. Because in the Caribbean, when they said the sugar get me, that's like a death sentence. Yeah, that's like a death sentence. So some people don't talk about diabetes, they talk about sugar get me. And the second time is when my cousin Ken, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Yeah, and when he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, he, he, I remember he told me how he got it. He got his food stress, but he said to me, if you ever become diabetic, don't take any medication because there's side effects to it. So I'm in the surgery now with my doctor and I'm thinking to myself, do I take medication or do I, do I not take medication? So this is where your mind comes into it. This is where the, the mental health issue comes in. Do I listen to the professional person or do I listen to my cousin who I grew up with all my life from a baby to adulthood and I love him dearly. So I thought to myself, you know something? I'm going to trust my, my cousin for what he said to me to try without. So I said to my doctor, can I try uh, reversing my type 2 diabetes without medication? And he said, listen, I don't recommend it. We're going to give you three weeks, yeah, to come back to have another HbA1c blood test and let's see what it's like, yeah? So I thought to myself, okay, right. And I thought to myself, okay, doctor, how did I become type 2 diabetic? This is the number one thing. How did I become type 2 diabetic? And it was through my lifestyle, yeah, of eating foods. So type two is when it's for your lifestyle of eating. So this is what I'm talking about today. And I have most of the answers for my journey. Nobody else is. Yeah. So they said to me, it was too much carbohydrates in your diet. Pasta, rice, potatoes, the fizzy drinks. Basically, it was my lifestyle. And to simplify it, what my lifestyle was for one day, 
I would, I would wake up in the morning, yeah? I'd have three slices of hard dough bread, yeah? Because hard dough bread is sweet and it's nice, yeah? And number two, I put butter on it, yeah? And then I put jam on it, yeah? I put jam on it and I bite into the bread. And if I didn't think there was enough jam on it, I put more jam on, yeah? And on that, on top of that, I'll have a, a latte, the coffee latte, and that comes in a sachet. And I'd always have uh, three, tea, three to four teaspoons of um, demerara sugar. Demerara sugar is a brown sugar because demerara sugar was more healthier for you. Yeah. So I'd have three teaspoons, four teaspoons in my coffee. And then on top of that, to shorten my story for this part, I put honey in it as well. I used to suffer from hay fever. And so that was my breakfast way to work in the car in the morning. Once I got to work, I was working in the pastry section as a chef. What I was doing in the mornings, I'd be cutting cakes, yeah? And we'd be sending the cakes out, cut into portions already to event. So all the cakes, we had to cut the trimmings off. So all the trimmings I put in a bowl in front of me, you know? And I would start eating them, yeah? And then somebody said, oh, do you want a tea, do you want a coffee? I said, yeah, I'll have another a tea or a coffee. So I'd have a tea with my sugar in and I'd put some honey in there as well with my cakes. That's in the morning at work. Lunchtime, we're gonna have uh, a carbohydrate, a pasta, rice, potato, and some meat, yeah? And it's always probably, sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's junk stuff, yeah? And that's normal. That was a lunchtime, yeah? In the afternoon, after lunch now, about 2, 2.30, we're gonna have another tea break. Tea break with, it's gonna be with cakes or with the biscuits and with a, with a sugar as well in my coffee or my tea at that time. And also what I've been doing as well, I'll be still adding my bit of honey. Just think, still honey, even though I've got the sugar, the cakes and everything else. Once I finished work, probably about four or five o'clock, I wasn't living in London. So my journey at home would take me about an hour, hour and a half sometimes. If it's a bad day, it would take me up to two hours. Yeah, so what I would do, I'll go to the shop and I get a, a, a free meal deal. Yeah, which usually a BLT sandwich, a fizzy drink or a chocolate bar or a pack of crisps. So any combinations I normally have. So I'd have that in my car on my way home. On some of my journeys home, I could hear a noise in the back of my car. Ka-ching, ching, ka -ching, ching And what that noise was when I got to that booth was J2Os. I had a case of J2O drinks in my car. Yeah. The reason being, I used to go out with my friends uh, to uh, the pubs and clubs and that. So £2.50 was for a bottle. When I went to cash and carry, it's £5.20 for a case. Yeah, so psychologically, you buy a case. So I had a case, in but what I would do, get in the booth, I'd open up one bottle of J2O, and at that same spot, I just bust one and just drink one full there and then. And then I'd take another bottle out and put in the car with me for my rest of my journey at home. And I still got my, my food in my car already and my other drinks to so take me home. Once I got home, once I got home, my wife, yeah, or your partners, whether they probably cooked a meal for you or you got something ready for you when you get home that evening, yeah? So it's going to be a pasta, rice, potato. In my case, I had my, my ginger beer and my mango juice on the table ready for me. So when I had my meal, but I said to my wife, listen, I can't eat all this. Now I've been eating all day. She says, what, is there something wrong with my food? I said, no. So what do you do then? You force yourself to eat again. So you're going to eat again. So you guys know, a lot of you guys out there know what you do after you've had your evening meal. You sit down and kick back and say, you're going to watch football, turn the TV on. But instead of watching football, you're falling asleep. Yeah, falling asleep until the wife or your partner nudges you. Come, go to bed, go to bed. So when you wake up now, to your wife, okay, go to bed. I'll be up in a minute. So up in a minute, say, child, I'm going to have a drink before I go <laughs> to bed. So I would go to the kitchen. I'll make myself a cup of tea. I'll open the cupboard. And what's in there? My digestive biscuits. So I take two or three of them out, sit down, eating it with my tea. I thought, I'll go get another three or four. And the next thing, I just take the packets. By the end of the night, I've eaten a packet of biscuits right at the end of the night before I go to bed with my tea. And the only reason why I tell you that is that there's so many of us do that on a day-to-day -day basis that we don't realize it. I didn't realize until I started to write my book, The Inspired Diabetic, yeah, what um, I was consuming on a day-to-day -day basis consume it on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is why I became type 2 diabetes, diabetic through my lifestyle, yeah? So when I, they said you're diabetic, I thought to myself, okay, what do I need to do? The first thing I said I need to do was to cut out the carbohydrates, the pasta, the rice, the fizzy drinks, the potatoes, all the things that put me in that position. 
So I'm not a medical person, guys. I'm going to put disclaimer here. This is my story, my journey. I stopped eating, yeah, past the rice potatoes that same day. The following day, I never touched it. I never touched it. I never touched my fizzy drinks, nothing like that. And all my life, I've been having these foods and drinks, but I had to make a decision. Number one, if I take the medication and it affects my body, I won't be able to work. Number two, I'm self-employed. If I don't work, I can't perform. Yeah. And number three, if I can't perform, it affects my lifestyle and my family. So this is what made me personally think, okay, I need to reverse this ASAP. So what I did then, okay, the next day I stopped eating food. Yeah. Okay. Within <clears throat> what I'd be what I'd be doing then, yeah, I'd be looking at other alternative foods to be eating which I'll go into more details with questions and answers later. But my cousin told me to focus on flavonoid foods, yeah? And what I'd done from there, within 25 days, yeah, of not having all the foods I was eating there, 25 days, my HbA1c was from was 92, it went down to 77. Another 28 days, it went down from 77 down to 60. And that's when I started to write the book. And that's another story and journey. From 60, I went right down to 41. That's below the 42 level. So I went back to normal, yeah? And that was in a total of 105 days, naturally, without any prescribed medication, yeah? So that's how I basically done it. And the four fundamental things that I'm gonna just finish off with is to say the mindset is one, yeah? Number two is nutrition or diet. I don't really like saying the word diet, but I've got to use it so we understand what we're talking about. When I talk about that, foods, what foods are you gonna start eating? What foods are you gonna take out of your diet? Yeah, okay. Number three, physical activity. I was big. Yeah, I was I was putting on a lot of weight. And I know that I was putting on weight when I went to my mother's house one day and she looked at me and said, Linda, your belly I'll get big. I said, What? She said, Linda, your belly I'll get big. I thought to myself, Mom, you can't talk to me like that. I'm the baby of the family, <laughs> you know. So my mom, my mom's Jamaican, so my mom don't mean so a word. So I said to my mum, okay. So when I got home, I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, boy, Lyndon, you don't know what you're doing to yourself. And then I remember mum said to me, pigs don't know when pigs sting. Because once you're in that environment of getting bigger and bigger, you realise it, but you do nothing about it, and you feel comfortable. And that was me. And the last thing, the fourth thing, was intermittently fasting. Yeah, intermittently fasting. But I didn't realise I was intermittently fasting. And that, uh, the, one of the persons that I know who explains intermittently fasting is Joe Dash. Yeah, he's, he's explained so, so good. But the thing about intermittently fasting, I found out about this from some of my nurse friends that told me about it. So my intermittently fasting was, I will take my daughter to school in the morning for 8.30, and then I'll go to the gym for about three, four hours. And I'll do it about four or five days of the week, not eating anything, just drinking water. And I'll come back to the car and have a pint of blueberries and a banana. And one, once a month, I would do a 24-hour fast before I was going for a blood test. I, would do it, I was conscious of that, doing a 24-hour fast. Because one thing you've got to remember, when you start to reverse your type 2 diabetes, you need to detox the body, cleanse the body, clean it out of all the junk. And intermittently fasting does that. Yeah, And doing a 24-hour fast on a regular basis does that as well. You know, so that, that's that's a, a very shallow part of my journey, very shallow part of my journey. But we're offering some some of the questions that we may get. Yeah, is going to be able to answer some of the more things that you want to talk about. But at the same time, you could go to my website, which Leo's going to probably say about the inspired by diabetes about me, what I've done and how I've done it. And there's, there's lots of little things that we can do. Yeah, but the first thing you've got to start with. Leon. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Wait, oh, man. There's a couple questions. That was amazing, Lyndon. A lot of questions. Anyone who wants to, you know, call in, you're going to have to raise your hand. So I see a couple hands raised. I don't know if Carol, Hope, Alison, is your hand raised because you want to... Um, you want me to unmute your mic and ask a question, let me know. If not, then remove your, bring the hand down. I'm just going to go through some of the questions that are in the Q&A section. This one says, are you more likely to get pancreatic cancer if you have diabetes? This is what we were told at one of my mom's hospital appointments. Sadly, my mom passed away 
last year. Sorry to hear that, Sabrina. So yeah, sorry to hear that. The question was, are you more likely to get pancreatic cancer if you have diabetes? Do you know? For my question to that, I, I really don't know. I'm not a medical person. That's a disclaimer, okay? Um, so th there's lots of things that I still don't understand about diabetes. Yeah. You know, there's lots of things, there's lots of medical things, terminologies I didn't understand. understand. When I was diagnosed, there were certain uh, numbers with the HbA1c, the percentages I was speaking to my doctor about because I found some on the internet, but he didn't even know what they were related to. So there's a, there was a lot of confusion about yeah. what levels are we using in different countries. They use they do AB ABA1c, and they do uh, percentages. So with the effects of uh, diabetes, after a while, I know it affects the heart, the lungs, the kidneys. You know, yeah. I had a fatty, I had a fatty liver. There are other effects that carry continue with diabetes will have definitely. That's such a good definitely. point. Um, diabetes definitely. The longer you have it, it will start to affect other organs and that sort of stuff. So that could be a big possibility, Sabrina. This question says, Lyndon, please, what exactly was your diet at the time of your diagnosis? He went over that actually. You said that in when you was talking. Um, do you have any information on flatbush diabetes, please? That's from Denise. Flatbush diabetes? A... No. Okay, so no, I, I no. I... Next one. What are the common side effects of metformin? Did you have any side effects? You didn't take it, did you? I know I didn't take it, so I don't know the side effects. Yeah. I, yeah. I can tell. I could tell you what the side effects are, but that'd be a disclaimer. You yeah, know, I'm not going to yeah. say say what it does do. You know, for, you need to find out from another source, not from me, because right. you will find you will find out. My cousin said there are side effects. Yeah which he told me, but there could be other ones compared to what he said to me. All right, I'm going to try and I've seen some couple, a couple hands raised. So, to Tonio. Antonio. Tonio, let me see. Can you unmute your mic? Is that working, Tonio? Yeah, good evening, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, Tonio. Yes. How are you doing? Tonio. How are you doing? Yeah, greetings, yeah, greetings. Yeah. Thank you for um, hosting the uh, session tonight, guys. Um, yeah, one question I had is, um, can you just elaborate a little bit more on what that intermittent fasting looks like, please? The, the intermittent fasting uh, is when you're not eating for a period of time. Could be five, six hours, could be eight hours, where, you're not, where you can be just taking uh, with liquid, just like water. It is. So what the intermittently fasting, at, at the beginning, psychologically, is hard to do. Because when you, when you feel hungry, you want to eat. Your natural body reaction is to eat something, yeah? So with intermittently fasting, you could either don't eat, don't drink anything, or you can drink water through that period of time, about five, six hours. But you could even start your intermittently fasting even the day before. So like if you stop eating like eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the evening, and then you sleep through the night, you wake up, and then you could have something maybe around 12 o'clock or one o'clock or two o'clock. So you just have, just have liquid. And the thing about it, the intermittent fasting, what you're going to find, your body, your, your stomach's going to start rumbling, yeah? And you're going to feel like you want to eat something. Because, but but you, what your body's doing, your body's finding food. Your fi it's, finding, it's finding itself, you know? Like, like, like one of my friends, your body's your temple. Your body's going to start to ingest itself to say, okay, where am I going to find food from? Where am I going to find energy from? And Brother, psychologically, that's such a, That is such a good point. Like, as, yeah. as soon as you start to do intermittent fasting, I've tried it. For the people who have tried it, as soon as your belly's rumbling, that's your belly saying, hey, I need food right now, yeah. or I'm going to start burning internal food, yes. which is if there's no food in the body, it starts to burn fat cells. It starts to burn toxins, <clears throat> starts to, you know, get rid of viruses and all that sort of right. stuff. That's exactly if when your belly starts to rumble, if you give in to that, then that defeats the purpose of intermittent fasting. Yeah, I know it's a hard thing to do, but that defeats the purpose. All right, Carol, I'm going to allow you to talk. Carol Andrews, Carol, would you like yeah, to ask? Yeah. yeah, I can see it. Hello. Hello. Hi, Carol. Hi. Uh, what it is with me, I suffer with fibromyalgia, et cetera. And basically, I don't eat. I don't eat regularly. So I only eat when my body tells me I'm hungry. Mm. So in that sense, my body's not really working right in that sense but can i can i class that as intimate fast fasting because i only eat when my body reminds me i'm hungry 
Do you know what I mean? How long, I don't eat what, regular. What period, but what period of time do you go through when you're not eating though? How long is that period of time? It could be hours. It could be hours, seriously. It could be hours like I could have breakfast. Like I won't remember to have breakfast until maybe about two, something like that. It's, yeah, it's so that's, very... that, that's, yeah, that's similar to intermittent fasting. But sometimes what you must remember, yeah, even though you're not eating, it's better to take, it's good to take liquids. Right. You know, drink, drink plenty of water. You, yeah. you, you must drink plenty of water, you know, otherwise you, you dehydrate yourself and then you feel weak. And then right, something okay. else is going to happen to you and you're going to think, oh gosh, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? Mm. You know, I had one situation where I, 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 I was working one day and my body just wasn't right. My mind wasn't feeling right. And this is when I was reversing my diabetes. So I was working and it was, I thought to myself, you know something, let me have two pieces of chocolate. You know, so I had two pieces of chocolate cake and within 15 minutes of having that, I felt better because my, my, my blood sugars was too low. You know, All right, brother, so, we're just going to try and get one more. So one yeah. more question in because we've got quite a few hands raised now. We're going to do one more. But remember, throughout the whole of this session, you guys can continuously ask questions. So next up is Econ. After he finishes, you guys can ask questions again. So I'm going to... Pauline. Pauline, can you unmute your mic? Hi. Pauline? Hiya. Yes, good Hi. evening. Yes, I'm so happy to um to, to get onto a forum that's discussing something that a lot of people take. Um, like I'm from a Caribbean background, so diabetes is kind of a part of our our background in that's a fine. sense. Okay. Yeah. With the I, I don't know who is the narrator, I don't know who is on, but the two gentlemen that I'm looking on, thanks. And um, yeah, I applaud you guys. The gentleman on the left. That is saying that he reverted his diabetes. I've done it four times. I've been diagnosed um, the last seven years. And obviously you cried and I said, no, I'm not gonna let this affect my life. But one, the discipline. Let me just um, see if I can address, not from, a, you know, uh, not from a professional point of view, the lady who said, because of her eating, what she has is an eating disorder, which has become her norm. So the period that she's not eating, I wouldn't classify it as fasting because that's what your body's used to. And that's what the gentleman says. She needs to be drinking liquid in between because her body needs something to function on. Okay, get back to the intermittent fasting. I would admit to that gentleman who reverses diabetes. One, what they are not gonna tell you, no one in the medical field or your doctor's surgery is gonna tell you that you don't need to take anything. And first in the beginning, they're not gonna tell you that it can be reverted. If they, if when they catch you, your, your, lev your levels are very high, they're gonna put you on insulin and your body's gonna get used to that. So I cried, like when they told me I was gonna put me on insulin. I said, no, 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 I can't because I cannot inject myself each day. I cried and they didn't. The metformin, I haven't picked up any side effect. The only side effect of metformin that I picked up in the beginning was it makes you feel very, very nauseous. Like you're pregnant, you wanna vomit, you wanna fall over. Your body's not used to it. But what I realized later down in my diabetes, it's that metfor the only thing that metformin does is help, um, is help with your diet. Metformin helps to make you get slimmer. So you take that metformin out like the gentleman does. Get very disciplined because I reverted mine um, four times. So if they start you on three, you, when, when you become disciplined, drop it down to two, then drop it down to one, then stop it when, you have, when your diet has become regular. And as the gentleman says with the intermittent fasting, and as soon as I came on, I cash when he says flush your system, Flush your system is the, is the intermittent fasting. Just get rid of all toxin. It is not a scientific thing. All you do, stop eating all the junk, eat anything that's green, prefer in a liquid form. It just flows through your body and it kind of alkaline the body. So when you go for your test next day, you're going to get a very good read. Oh, thank you, sir. I've got it. I've got it. Because, but what? One more thing, because I know that I'm coming on, just coming on and taking up some time. What, what the gentleman of that is like green glory. And um, apart from that, don't use no fanciness in it and don't let it cost you a lot. Use what you, what is readily available. Use, um, a lot of people um, let um, the green one, broccoli stays in the fridge, if the green one is broccoli, for long. Blend it, 
cut it up fine and blend it. The other little one that looks like little little cabbage that they heat at Christmas time, cut that up and blend it as well because sometimes you can get them really, really cheap. Just use at least four. Put ginger and lime in there for it to taste better. And the next thing with the, with the fasting, um, just continue doing it intermittently, probably once a month or so, and you'll be surprised, or it loses your belly fat, then you started feeling good about yourself, and you don't remember the chocolate. The next thing, don't, as the man says, don't let your blood sugar level fall where you're going to pass out. Eat a piece of chocolate, have some, don't do Lucozade and them things anymore. It's better for you to get some glucose and have it at hand, because Lucozade and those other Gatorade, they've got so much um, high processed sugar content that that can send your thing so hot that you go into an iPod. Anyway, I gotta go. Thank you guys and all the listening. Thank you, thank sis. You. Much appreciated. Everyone else, just hold back. We're gonna go on to the next person now. So thank you, Lyndon. Lyndon's gonna be staying around. So I'm if here. you have any other questions for Lyndon, um, just wait um, after Ekong or after Charles and you can ask him questions. We'll try and get through some of the questions. Um, Lyndon, if you can, if you go into the Q&A section, if there's okay. any questions that you can just type in and answer, I will. you can type in and answer them. But now next up, we have a special guest by the name of Ekong and he's from Eat to Live, Not to Die. Eat to Live, Not to Die, it was a, a book. I purchased it when it first came out, a really powerful book. Here's the brother right here, very powerful brother. And if you haven't heard of him, you're gonna be blown away. He's, he's a, a a uh, follower of Dr. Sabi. So I saw um, people talking about broccoli as a hybrid in the comment section. So all of those sort of questions, this is the guy to ask. Anything with regards to Dr. Sabi, this is the guy, yeah? So Econ, you ready to take it away, brother? 100%, 100%. Can everyone hear me? Yes, indeed, bro. Thank all you. Yours. Thank you, brother. Thank you for um, putting this all together. We appreciate you highly, bro. Um, first things first, I just want to read something to you that I wrote, okay? The title of it is called Mental Health and Food. Constipation, when caused through overeating and improper food preparations, is a primary contributor to the condition known as mental unrest and nervous breakdowns as well. Our health authorities are aware of these facts and they recognize that the human body's central nervous system is being poisoned, poisoned by toxins from food, okay, from the waste that is produced through constipation, which enters the bloodstream, okay? And remember, where doesn't the blood go? The blood goes everywhere in your body. So every part of you will be affected. Nature has provided many safety devices to ensure that only the purest blood feeds the brain cells, but often nature is an, unable to cope with the situation. Impurities in the blood supplied to the brain makes normal functions of this most important organ insufficient and befundled. Basically foggy memory, you're not clear-minded, you're, you're basically, you're deteriorating and it starts from the brain first. So I've just shown you here how mental health and food can coincide right now the brother that was on before me said that if your blood sugar level is um above 42 you, you're diabetic right now what makes the what is it that is causing us to have diabetes this is the main question because a lot of people there's an african proverb right don't put the bucket on the floor to catch the drip coming from the roof go on top of the roof with your hammer in your nail and your board and seal the hole in the roof. That's the most, that's the fundamental part of uh, um, trying to attain the, the, the cause of the problem, going straight to the primary area where it's being caused. So the primary area that, that, is, being, that is causing the diabetes is our food, is what is going into our bodies every single day. No, wait, what is going into our bodies from our mother's womb? Because when your mother's pregnant with you, she was eating for two. In fact, she was eating for 80,000, okay? 80,000. The reason why I say 80,000 is because in each ovum, in each ovary, a woman is carrying 40,000 eggs each. 
So she's nourishing those eggs and she's also going to nourish the egg that is going to be fertilized that's going to grow in her womb. So she's feeding many. She's feeding legions of human beings. Okay. So she's eating the wrong foods, i.e. rice, chicken, beef, lamb, turkey, ackee, broccoli, um, dasheen, bami, cassava, all of these things that we believe is food when these things are actually food-like substances, especially the, the, the cassava, people would swear blind that cassava was, is a, is a you know, African-made food and it's from Africa, but the Portuguese made cassava. And the Portuguese will, will tell you that if you just go and ask them, they created that for us to eat because it was quick, easy, and readily available for the people that were hungry when they took them from the motherland. So now, the reason why the blood sugar level was so high is because these foods, guess what's inside of cassava? Sugar. Guess what's in rice? Sugar. Guess what's in um, potatoes? Sugar. All of these things that we believe that are foods that contain starch is sugar because sugar is starch and starch is sugar. On top of that, can you imagine that cassava contains cyanide? Can you imagine that rice contains cyanide? So if sugar is starch, and we know that um, sugar is inside of cassava and inside of rice, then you will also be aware that cyanide is also going to be in there. Why? Because what I'm talking about, it can be easily researched. And, you know, the, 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 the scientists of today, they don't hide nothing. There's information out there that will tell you that there's some places in the world where cassava is banned, where rice is banned where sugar is banned. Like, you have, we have to realize this. And I understand this lack of, you know, knowledge is what makes a lot of people go through what they're going through in life. So what we need to do, brothers and sisters, is merely change our diet. I don't even like using that word diet either because it, to me, it's die and quiet. I don't want to choose something that's going to make me die quietly. I don't want to do that. I want to pick something that is a lifestyle. It's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. You have to choose a lifestyle. A lifestyle that does not contain any starches, any sugars, any dairy, any, any um, what do they call it, high cholesterol products, all these carbs that we like to consume. All of these things are not food. All of these foods are not food. Food-like food substances are not food. They're food-like. Harry bowls, where does that grow in nature? Where does Doritos grow in nature? The only rice on the planet Earth that grows naturally is the wild rice, the Caribbeans know. The elders that are listening right now that are between 50s and 60s, you know that because it grows as a grass over there and many people don't like eating it. Why? Because it's black. It grows in the swampy areas. I don't want to eat that. I'm used to white rice. I get it. Black people are some of the most undisciplined human beings on this Earth and I don't blame us. We've been conditioned. We've been conditioned. And because of this, this conditioning, we're not able to see that, hold on, my health is more important than my food. I'm not going to put food above my health. I know I love the food. I know I'm emotionally connected to this food. I've been eating it for a long time. I love it, but my life is more important. So the things that we need to, I'm going to talk about some foods that are good to eat. Some of the foods that are good to eat in regards to replacing the rice, because how many days can pass in a week where a black person doesn't put rice in their mouth? So we need to be eating things like this. Quinoa, amaranth, also spelt as well, that comes as a grain. Teff, fonio, and remember, remember quinoa comes as three. It comes as a black quinoa, a white quinoa, and a red quinoa, yeah? And also wild rice, as I said before, those are the grains that we are allowed to eat, that we that will not create this mucus in the body because it's mucus. The sugars that we're consuming also doesn't just mess you up, doesn't just give you type one diabetes, type two diabetes. It doesn't just raise up the sugar level. It's also causing your organs to be coated with mucus. And this mucus is not allowing oxygen to go into your organs. Just as we need oxygen to breathe, the organs need oxygen as well. But it needs oxygen through iron. 
And iron is something I'm going to touch on very quickly as well. Why don't I condone this word melanin? And I know it's a very controversial subject, but I have to say it because, you know, I want to live truth, even if it kills me. So brothers and sisters, one of the most important things that we have to understand about iron is that, sorry, about carbon, not melanin, carbon. Carbon is on the periodic table. Melanin is not on the periodic table. Calcium is on the periodic table. Magnesium is on the periodic table. Zinc is on the periodic table, which addresses your prostate gland, which addresses the uterus. These, these um, minerals is what we need to sustain the human body. You can't go on the periodic table and find melanin there. Otherwise I would be using it. It's a made up word. We need to, I understand people are saying it because you know, the skin color, melanin and all of that, but we need to try and start using the word carbon because it makes more sense now, all right? So listen, which part of the body is the most carbonated part of the body? The pineal gland. And what, is, what sits around that? The brain, all right? The cerebral cortex. That brain of ours, yeah, it needs high amounts of iron or carbon. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. How do you increase your carbon levels? or your melanin levels by consuming products that contain iron, my brothers and sisters. Now, what are some of the herbs that contain iron? I'm gonna go through a list with you quickly before I tell you what, what the importance of these things are. Cancansa, guaco, contribo, hombre grande, bugle weed, yellow dock, cocomeca bark, ortiga, red clover, Burdock root, salsa sprella, elderberries, blue vervain. Those are herbs. Let's talk about foods that contain iron because herbs contain iron and there's foods that also contain iron. The foods are leafy alkaline greens. In Jamaica, there's parsley over there. There's dandelion over there. These things are considered as weeds, but they're iron rich leafy greens. Watercress, callaloo, fonio. Dandelion greens is another one, okay? Um, blackberries and wild rice. These are things that are high in iron that are foods, my brothers and sisters. Again, I'm coming from the premise of Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi is someone that not many people like talking about him because at the end of the day, he's bringing forth discipline. He's trying to discipline us. He's trying to show us a way of life that requires discipline. And many of us, unfortunately, we don't have it. We can get it if we put our minds to it. I know we all can do it, but we must become disciplined in this, in this area of life, our food. If you can't discipline yourself in regards to food, you're gonna get all kinds of diseases. It doesn't matter what type of disease we're talking about, so from brain issues, from kidney problems, from eye problems, back problems, any type of problems you could get just by not being able to take in those essential minerals that we need, vital minerals. Not vitamins, vital minerals. You see how the two sound the same? Vitamins, vital minerals. So someone's trying to snow us. Someone's trying to deceive us. Who do you think that is? So now, let's go, let's go further. Let's go deeper. What are some of the benefits of consuming um, iron? And obviously, I'm trying to tell you that, yes, when you increase your iron levels, you're gonna remove your diabetes completely. And you're gonna remove a whole lot of other ailments as well. Because people that suffer from psoriasis, skin conditions, um, inflamed eyes, inflamed feet, foot, like there's a lot of people in this world that don't realize that inflammation is merely a blood clot or merely calcium carbonate that's building up. You see in the breast of the woman, that lump is called calcium carbonate. That's the starch. That's the starch that has been collected ever since she was one years old, two years old, three years old, four years old, five years old. She was depositing to that, to that ball in her breast every single day for 25 years, 45 years, 55 years. Same thing with the fibroid. Deposit into that fibroid, 25 years, 42 years, 66 years, depositing to that fibroid. And we know fibroids can be as big as children. We know fibroids can be as big as a tennis ball. We know, look, is very, very serious. So let's go in, because I know I ain't got a lot of time, but I'm trying to fit as much information into this segment as possible. 
Now, to maintain carbon levels, right, you must consume plant-based iron fluorine teas, all right? I just mentioned the teas to you a minute ago. That's why I mentioned them first. Secondly, iron is the most important mineral because it supplies oxygen to the brain, which produces electricity and transports it to various parts of the body via the central nervous system, allowing motion. Name one thing in the world that moves that does not require electricity to move. Nothing. There's nothing in the world. The clouds in the sky, electricity is moving. The water, it's a current, there's electricity there. The water is the greatest conductor in the world, electricity. Your windows in your car, if the, if the engine is not on, electricity, spark plug, boom, your engine is on, you can now move the windows up and down. Iron is important, very important, brothers and sisters. Now, drinking iron is anti-aging, okay? It removes these wrinkles. You know those wrinkles inside of our, on our face, on our bodies, stretch marks? Iron can help to remove that. And I wanted to just throw this in. Why do they say that diabetes cannot be cured when my man that was before me just said that he cured his diabetes? But the health professionals will come and tell us that we can only treat it and control it. My brothers and sisters, you can cure your diabetes. Simple, it's that simple, all right? But again, if you don't have discipline, you will never be able to because the diabetes will go, come back, go, come back, go, come back, go, come back because you don't want to stop the rice. You don't want to stop the potatoes. You don't want to stop the cheese. You don't want to stop all these things that are man-made. All the things that I mentioned are all man-made. Let me show you, tell you some more stuff that are man-made. And I'm reading from my book, Eat to Live, Not to Die, Hidden Facts from Health of Health Nutrition, edition one. Another book coming very soon. All potatoes, aloe vera, asparagus, wheat, barley, beetroot, foxglove, enchinensia, comfrey, coffee, cauliflower, cassava, Brussels sprouts, all yams except wild yam, golden seal, grapefruit, iceberg lettuce, jackfruit, eggplant, turnips, peppermint, peanut. Peanuts are used to make TNT, plastic explosives, paprika, palm oil, nutmeg, moringa, Valencia oranges, St. John's wort, rose hips, spare mint, aki. Sugarcane is devouring us. Sugarcane is devouring us. People are sucking on sugarcane like it's normal. That is the number one road towards diabetes. That's the number one road of high blood pressure. In the Caribbean now, it, that has that. In the Caribbean, the highest amount of impotence can be found over there can be found over there. Why do you think that's, why do you think that's happening? Turmeric, dead. Licorice stick, dead as well. I know some of this information is gonna be hard to swallow. I know it's gonna be hard to swallow. And many people are just like, I don't think I can agree with Mr. Ekong right now. I get it. That's how I was when I first was presented with the information. I started my journey at 23, I'm 31 now. I'm a layman, I'm not a health practitioner, I'm not a doctor, I'm just someone who is self-taught. I've got a degree in graphics design, so I'm able to produce the information. But everything else I, knew, I know, I'm learning as I grow. Do you understand? The meek shall inherit the earth. Now, I've told you the foods that are bad. Now people are saying, what's the foods that are good? I, I don't think I'll have enough time to go through everything in this book here, but this book right here is the book that we all need. This is a visual representation of Dr. Sebi's nutritional guide, which can be found at eattolivenottodie.com. All one word, eattolivenottodie.com. Now, it has many foods in here. I'm just gonna say a few, not everything, but these foods in here will help you and aid you. And guess what I'm gonna show you as well. There's a cookbook that my wife has created called Cook with Matulu, Alkaline Cuisines. She has broken it all down and made it very easy for us all to learn how to prepare alkaline foods, my brothers and sisters. All right. You're able to go onto our website and download this as an ebook. Ever since we turned it, turned it into an ebook, hundreds of people have been um, purchasing it. We need to get ourselves a tablet, purchase that, e purchase that ebook, and have that tablet in front of us while we're cooking foods. Books are good but that's not the way the world is going towards right now. Everything is, is becoming more digital. I'm not saying that's your books, no way. 
we've got this is the last copy that I've got. I don't think I'm going to create anymore, but everything's on my tablet right now. So some of the foods are here. We have amaranth, avocado, wild arugula, bell peppers, chayotes, or chocho in, in Jamaica. You have dandelion greens, garbanzo beans, burrow banana, also known as frog banana in the Caribbean. You know tuna, we also call it nopalas, all right? That's like a, uh, a cactus, aloe vera is dead. You don't want that, you want the tuna, that's the replacement for that. We have olives, spring onions, scallion, lettuce, mushrooms. I know Jamaicans call that the duppy plant, the mushroom, but trust me, mushrooms is brain food. That's the reason why it resembles the dome. Mushrooms are product of my product of mycelium and it reconnects the neurons inside of our brains. It repairs the brain. Mushrooms, they're powerful. Figs, grapes, limes, key limes, seeded grapes, by the way. Mangoes, melons with seeds, um, civil orange, papaya, peaches, pears, plums, prunes, raisins, soft jelly coconut, soursop, tamarind, raspberries, blackberries, Jamaican ginger, African ginger, fennel, elderberries, rye, quinoa, kamut, fonio, spelt, teff. We have oils to use because a lot of these oils that we're using is rubbish, causing high cholesterol, causing inflammation, clogging up our blood. It, it won't work. So we have to try our best to now cook with um, avocado oil, hemp seed oil, or sesame seed oil. Do you understand? Don't cook with coconut oil. Don't cook with olive oil. Use those oils to garnish your salad with. That's it. Um, the nuts, walnuts, Brazilian nuts. These things are good. Seasonings. We've got the savory, oregano, um, sweet basil, tarragon, thyme, bay leaf, clove, dill. We have anchoyote. We have um, African bird pepper, um, scotch bonnet, called, also known as herbanero. When it comes to now sugar, use agave syrup as your sugar replacement, or go and make yourself some date syrup using dates with seeds. Um, sea moss, blue vervain, uh, chipeling, red clover, sage, um, natural sea salt, not table salt. You don't want that. Um, rapeseed oil is not good. I saw that just right, right there. Rapeseed oil, dead. You don't want that at all. So now, going back to the benefits of iron, trying to stuff everything into this one segment. Now, listen to this, yeah? Two minutes, brother. The woman needs more iron than anyone else on this planet Earth. Why? Because she, she is going to be releasing blood from herself every 30 days. So she needs the most iron out of everyone on this Earth, especially Black women. They need it because they need to keep themselves nourished. Because what? She gives birth to everyone. Women give birth to males and females. Do you understand? So, as well, every, everyone knows, right, vitamin D. We all know about that. But what is vitamin D? Think about this. Do you really think that man can take the power, the energy of the sun and put it in a tablet and say, hey, you go, take some vitamin D tablets. It's going to give you the same energy as the sun. Never. It's impossible. If you want vitamin D and you don't have the sun available, Please drink your alkaline herbs. All those herbs that I mentioned, drink those herbs in abundance. Please drink those herbs in abundance. Don't eat anything in the morning. Your first meal is at 12 o'clock. The best breakfast in the world, instead of eating something, drink hot water with key limes. And then at 12 o'clock, between 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, you have your meal. You have your one meal of the day. It's not easy. You have to learn how to do this. You have to learn how to... Intermittent fasting is good. But what are you eating is the main, main and fundamental thing that we need to think about, brothers and sisters. Eight hours. Let me read something quickly to you as well. This is the one last point I'm going to make. It's 20 seconds. This is a very, very important quote that I need to give to you just before I leave. Yeah. This will make you understand things much more easier. Now, listen to this. The digestive system needs 24 hours to complete its work. Eight 16, 24 hours. Eight hour window to consume food. Eight hour window to digest food. Eight hour window to absorb the energy of the food. Then eliminate, then elimination happens when nature calls for it. Consumption, 
digestion, absorption, elimination. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Wow. So much information. A lot of people were asking you to put back up your book. Can you put back up the first book and then the second and then the third, the first book? Just keep it up there so people can see it. Eat to Live, Not to Die, a very, very powerful book. Bro, you blew up the chat. Everyone's saying thank you. That was brilliant, bro. Thank you. So that's the book. Go to his website, Eat to Live, Not to Die. Very powerful book. And here's the other one that he was talking about. Um, was this the, is this the one that's been made into an ebook? No, this is this is the nutrition. This will be an ebook though. This is gonna be turned into an ebook very soon. But this is the nutritional guide. All right. Okay. This is the nutritional guide, what you need to be eating. And then okay. this book here is the cookbook, but this isn't the ebook version now on my website. This is an so you guys can download now. this so they can download this book right now, yeah. Once they purchase the book on my website, the link will be sent straight to their email where you can download it. So it's okay. downloadable. All right. It has okay. everything you need. All the Africans out there that like to eat fufu, we've got fufu quinoa. People that like cake and custard, we've got cake and custard there for you. We've got burgers there for you. Everything wow. is there. My wife's done a brilliant job on that one. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. All right, brother, if you can just uh, get ready for these questions now. I know loads of people had questions when you were, when you were talking, bro. So uh, there's so many in the Q&A section. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to them. I'll try and get to some, but... People, remember, raise your hand and then I'm going to allow you to speak. So, Linda, I can see that your hand is raised. So, Linda, would you like to ask a question, Linda? Just need to unmute yourself, Linda, if you can. Linda, going once. Going twice. The water in Nigeria. The nothingness, who will go and buy? Where will they buy all the things? Okay, potato, they cannot eat potato. What of the sweet potato? It didn't mention it. All those so, things that you're supposed to mention. Sorry, Linda, there's a lot of background noise. If you can. Oh, sorry, I never knew you can hear us because my mom is actually listening to this information. You know, we're actually Nigerians, right? So she's, okay. ha we're ha she's having a debate. Uh, Econ, Econ, it's good you're listening to this because I know you're half Nigerian, half Cameroon. She's sitting next to me. She's basically angry that you're saying that um, she shouldn't eat cassava. Please, can you tell her more on that? Because I know I follow you on in Eat to Leave. I follow you on Instagram. So I live mm -hmm. the Akaline web um, lifestyle as well. So I'm trying to move my mom towards the same journey as, as well. So she's getting angry that... You can hear her in the background oh, that she's, she's she should eat cassava, no, you know. No, no, she's getting cassava because I don't eat cassava. Okay. okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. So so therefore so yeah, yeah, he wants to so answer. basically he cannot take it. Yeah, he wants right. to answer. Yeah, please, Econ, and give her more information on that, please. Okay. So so basically <laughs> the way the way mommy, I understand I'm an African man I'm from Nigeria. I'm, I'm mostly rooted in Nigeria. I've been to Cameroon once with my dad. He's from um, Cameroon, but he moved to Nigeria. So I know about fufu, gari, ground rice, everything. I know it all. I grew up on it. So now you don't have to change the way you eat. You just have to change what you eat. So if you go and buy quinoa, quinoa is accessible everywhere. In Nigeria today, there's a product called Acha, also known in the UK, known as Fonio. Fonio is something that you can use to make your, we call it swallow, isn't it? You put it into a round bowl, you dip it into your vegetable soup and you swallow it. We call it swallow. So these are replacements for the cassava. Cassava, it doesn't, it doesn't digest. This is the reason why most African men who are in their 40s, 50s, even 20s now, they're looking six months pregnant, seven months pregnant, nine months pregnant, ready to burst. Why? Because the food that they're eating is not going anywhere. They have food in their belly from 2014. They have food in their stomach from 2005, undigested. Do you understand? This is what's happening to us all over the diaspora, even in, in Brazil as well, even in Cent Central America. Cassava is everywhere in every type of form that you can fathom and imagine. So all we have to do is just take the fonio or take the uh, quinoa or take the teff, all the grains that I mentioned, you can find them as powder or you can even put it into your um, blender, 
blend the grain into a flour, add water, and make your quinoa fufu, fonio fufu, whatever grain you decide to use. It's that simple. All right then, brother. Thank you for that. Uh, next up, Bianca. Bianca, if you can... Hi. Uh, hiya. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to know, it, all the stuff that you mentioned is, is very good, but I just wanted to know, isn't it the way that we kind of, how we make food, how we make food, isn't that quite important? And what would you advise on how we make certain foods? So I know when we're kind of having steamed veggies, some people will say, depending on how you make it, will will be more beneficial. So with some of the foods that you've, you've listed, how which way would you suggest is best for us to actually consume this is it through the blender is it through soups is it just grained into the into our food how would you say that we should any 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 form any form you want to put the food in your belly is up to you because it's natural if you put yeah. carrots into your body whether you put raw carrot or cooked carrot or boiled carrot or fried carrot the carrot's still going to harm you because carrot is not natural same thing goes for the beetroot same thing goes for the cassava. Anything unnatural, it doesn't matter what form you put it into and you put that into your mouth, it's going to have the same effect. And it yeah. also it's, it's the same for the alkaline foods. Any form you put it into your body as, it's going to have the same effect on you because it's alkaline at the end of the day. These foods I'm promoting to you are what? Water soluble. Meaning that if you leave it in water for a week, some if, for a day, it's going to evaporate. Sorry, it's going to melt. It's going to become one with the water. But if you leave rice in water for 200 years, it won't go nowhere. It will just swell up. And that's what's happening in the belly. That's what's happening in the bloodstream. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you, Bianca. All right. Next up, last question. And I'll try and get some out of the Q&A section as well. Uh, where are we? Ruth. So, Ruth, I see you've got your hand raised. Ruth. Ruth, can you unmute your mic? Hello. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Hi, Ruth. Good evening. Um, I was diagnosed with lupus um, some time ago when I was 16. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 35 years old now. I've mm -hmm. been on medication nonstop ever since. Um, but previously, I went to Uganda four years ago. And obviously the natural foods, the natural weather, but I was told to stay away from the sun. But ever since I came back to England, the lesions has disappeared from my skin. And they're asking me, what did I use? What did I eat? Um, but I didn't do anything special. It's just that I was in the sun and I was still on the medication but it's gone away now. And I was just wondering if you can help me because right now they're trying to put me on stronger medication, which is causing inflammation in my knees, my joints, hair loss, and it's keeping me, it's making me depressed really. And I just want some help. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give you my advice. I'm not a medical practitioner, I'm not a doctor. I'm just gonna give you my soul, what my spirit is saying. Number one, the sun is, to, everybody knows Superman. Superman gets his energy from the sun. Superman is, was created off the back of black people, simple as ABC. So we are the Superman and we are the superwoman. So we need the sun. Us being here in England is, is, is offensive to our biochemistry, period. Okay, that's number one. So you need that. A lot of people in Africa are not dying right now because of that sun. So they need to give thanks and praise to the most high for that sun there. Secondly, if you're suffering from lupus, you need to remove all sweet things from your diet completely. And you must drink iron. Iron, you can purchase it from our website or go and purchase the herbs that I mentioned in, in the, in the um, lecture today. The reason why you need iron is because you need to balance out and clean out the toxins from your bloodstream. Your blood is very dirty. Your blood sugar level is through the roof and you need to drink things that are bitter, it's good for the liver, it's good for the brain, it's good for you it, just as a whole. You need to remove all sweet things, even alkaline fruits. Don't eat them. First, you must fast. If you can't fast on iron and sea moss and water alone, 
first start to change your diet first so it doesn't shock your body. First start eating alkaline salads, start drinking alkaline smoothies. And then after you've done that for a month, then you can start fasting. You know, you eat only, you drink only the iron, one cup a day and two cups a day in the morning and the night. And then you drink one cup of CMOS a day and you drink three liters of water a day. And you do that every single day for 12 days. And then you go and get your lupus test again and see what they say. All right, everyone else, okay. you're gonna get a chance. To, you're gonna get a chance to ask your questions a bit later, brother. If you can, um, if there's any questions that you want to ask, answer in the Q and A section, feel free to answer them. There is a lot there, but feel free to go through some if you want to answer some in the, in the Q and A section. Okay. Can I ask on. Econ a question, a quick question, please? Very quick question, please. Sis. Thank you, Econ. What what herbs would you suggest for fibroids and all of that? For fibroids, I will suggest yes. uh, I will suggest hydrondria. That's one herb, hydrondria, blue vervain, okay. yellow dock, yellow dock root, sea moss. Because yeah, what okay, you're good. doing, I take sea moss. Yeah, sea moss and red clover as well. Red okay. clover and sarsaparilla. Okay. These okay. are going to help to melt the fibroid. You don't cut out fibroids because it will come back again because we're not changing the diet. So you must drink the herbs to melt away the fibroid. To dissolve it okay oh, that's not working. Yeah. all right thank you thank you very much ekong you're welcome thank you everybody for listening and yeah there are quite a few questions i think i'm gonna try and answer questions. them yeah yeah big up enough respect all right thank you. so next up we have let me see if he's there charles from ankara 300 people online all right, so let me, yes, indeed, Charles from Ankara is there. And Charles, like I say, he's the owner of Ankara, which is a black owned supplements company. And he deals with Moringa, red algae, some other very powerful products. And if you go on his website, you, you probably, um, some of you might have seen uh, some of his testimonials of people, black people saying, oh my gosh, I've tried these products and it really worked. Been trying it for a couple months and it got rid of this, it got rid of that. So this is Charles from Ankara. And for the next few minutes, he's just gonna talk about what he does, talk about his products. And then again, you guys are gonna get a chance to ask him any questions. And then the whole panel, including myself, the whole panel will be available for you, all of your questions, yeah? So Charles, greetings. Greetings, Leon, you know, first of all, I'd like to big up the Eden Science Academy because um, over the years now, you guys have been doing some amazing work, amazing work. So, you know, we give fans some praises for the most to the most I Give thanks. Also, Ecom, a brilliant talk, you know. Um, you're, you're getting the message out there. We've been on a few, met at a few events before the lockdown, before and continue your work my brother you're doing a good job out there and it's well needed in our community for sure right well as leon leon could you put my um website in the chat for me um ankara.com okay um yes yes right so i'm charles now i'm going to give you a little bit about myself and how i came into the herbal industry there was a time in my life, yeah, when I was suffering from a condition and I was going to my doctors and my doctors was prescribing me with creams, okay, for a period of about, say, well, they provided me with creams. At first it worked. Then I had the problem come back again. Went back to the doctors. They provided me with more creams, the same cream. I was happy because I said, yes, this one worked. And I went home, started using the cream and found out that I was just getting worse. So after about a year of to and from the doctors, different creams and everything was just escalating and getting a lot worse. The doctor says to me, he's going to um, put me over to a specialist. Yeah, what they call a dermatologist. Went over to the dermatologist. Um, and they gave me an examination and put me on some different creams. This went on for about a year and the situation only getting worse. 
for one day I had to turn up at the dermatologist. Now these are the so-called specialists to tell me that you're gonna have this condition for life, young man. You're just gonna have to accept it. So I was devastated at that point. Cause can you imagine the, the people that you're relying on to get you better are gonna tell you they can no longer help you. However, after that bad news through talking, I got introduced to a herbalist. And I went to see this herbalist and the herbalist provided me with some supplements. He didn't even look at me to that. You know, when I'm trying to show him where I've got a problem, which is a skin problem, he didn't even really look. He says, no problem, I can sort that out. Now me being used to the doctor and the examinations and stuff, I was wondering, does this guy know what he's doing? But I had no choice. That was the only thing I could try. Within two days, I noticed there was changes. Within one month, I was cured. Now, in curing, one of the things was detoxing. And what I realized at the end of the month, I had mental clarity, my thoughts were clear. And that's when I knew that what I wanted to do. I wanted to be the go-to person when other people are told by these so-called specialists or doctors, you'll have this condition for life. Yeah, I wanted to help others in the same way I got help. So after two years of researching and traveling, I started Ankara. Ankara is a high quality supplement company. We started out with Moringa. Now, Moringa, we was traveling for two years and we were testing Moringa from all over the world. And that's when we realized that not all Moringa is the same. There's a difference in quality and the higher the quality is the more potent the Moringa is. So we found the highest quality and we started to supply this quality in 2010. Now, when we started to supply Moringa, nobody knew what Moringa was, but I will stay here today and confidently say Ankara supplies the highest quality Moringa found anywhere in the world. If you're just coming back from Jamaica or you're just coming back from Africa and you brought Moringa with you, that's good. But I still will say Ankara is the highest quality Moringa found anywhere in the world. Now, in our community, no one really knew what Moringa was and there was a lot of doubters. So what I done, I went out into, into health industry with my Moringa and 2013, I won, won the best new product. This time we had been out for three years already. 2014, I was highly commended best supplement. Um, and this was in a, an awards where there was multinational companies. So for Ankara to come highly commended, you know, above many multi-level multinational companies, these big companies, we came above them. 2015, I was awarded best sports nutrition. I also produced a European champion in cage fighting by looking after his nutrition. Okay. So to the Moringa, okay, which we sell in, I have right here, in a powder form, okay? This is the Ankara Moringa, you may have seen it, okay? We also supply Moringa in a tablet form, okay? And this is what won the um, Sports Nutrition Award, okay? We also supply one of Leon's favorites, the Ankara Moringa oil, okay? Now, a lot of you might be wondering what is so special about this Moringa? From the Moringa leaf powder, okay, you're getting over 90 nutrients, all on a cellular level. As Econ explained earlier, iron is very important. A Moringa contains 25 times the iron you'll get from spinach. Okay, it contains potassium, it has calcium. It contains potassium. It has over 46, antioxidants, it has amino acids, it has omega-3, 6 and 9, all working on a cellular level. So with the iron, 
giving the oxygen to the brain, as Econ explained, also a lot of customers have come back and said they've realized that they've had mental clarity. Okay, and this is due to the iron level in Moringa. Okay, um, Moringa, it's nutrition, yeah, is absolutely amazing. And if you was to go to the Ankara website, you'll see testimonies from customers, okay, that they've got over many issues. Okay, we've got lots of five star trust pilot reviews, video testimonies from customers taking Moringa. Now, along with the Moringa, we've got this product here, which is the red algae. Okay, now this is a high source of calcium and magnesium with over 70 trace minerals. So as Econ said earlier, the minerals is important. And what minerals you're getting from the red algae is you're getting calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, iodine. You're getting a very important iron called heme iron, which is very hard to get from plants. Okay, red algae was the first life form on the planet. It's also a seaweed. Okay, but it's a very rare um, species of red algae that Ankara supplies. It's a very high quality. Okay, again, in supplying, so if you're taking Moringa with over 90 nutrients, okay, and you're taking red algae, yeah, with what's got calcium and magnesium with over 70 trace minerals straight away there, that's a lot of nutrition and minerals you're putting into the body. Okay. We also have a product called Sharpen the Brain. Okay, Econ explained earlier that the brain is very important for our health. Okay, especially the pineal gland. Okay, now this contains phosphatidyl serine and phosphatidyl chlorine in the Sharpen the Brain, which is very important for the functioning of the eyeway of the brain. Okay. And it's very good nutrition for the pineal gland, okay? Because most of our pineal glands are crystallized because of the foods that we've been eating, okay? Because the food is very important for your diet, but the foods nowadays, they're so depleted. This is why supplements is very important. So we can supplement the food and what we're not getting from the food, we'll get from natural high quality supplements, okay? We also provide another product, which is the artery cleanser, okay? Which basically explains, explains it for itself. It's an artery cleanser, okay? We've got um, the JLab gel also for women. Now I heard someone speaking about fibroids earlier. Now, if you go on the website, you will see that customers I've also written in, done five star um, testimonies, yeah, trust pilot reviews about using this gel, okay, in combination with Moringa and realizing they're saying that their fibroids had literally disappeared, as Econ mentioned earlier. You don't have to take out the womb and stuff like that. Provide the womb with the nutrition it needs to function okay, and it takes care of itself. The reason why Moringa is very important, yeah, if you've got fibroid, as Econ mentioned earlier, because your monthly, yeah, when you're, if you've got fibroids, you'll probably be bleeding very heavy, okay? And if you're bleeding very heavy, you're losing a lot of iron. So the Moringa is a very important combination as customers as reported, on our website, their feedback. We've got also video testimonies from customers saying that they found benefits in using these products, it has assisted them. Okay, now we also do Purple CMOS and it's out of stock on the website at the moment, but um, we've just got a new bash of very high quality Purple CMOS, Irish Moss, some may know it as, and it will be on the Ankara available and the Ankara website on Monday. 
We haven't got any for a while because Ankara only supplies the highest quality found anywhere in the world. So we've been out of stock for a while, but on Monday, Purple Sea Moss will be available on the Ankara website. So there's one other product, which is a new product. And this one is for men because over the years of supplying the JLab gel, okay, which women have reported many things, the JLab gel is also a libido for women, okay? So if you go onto the website, you will see testimonies from women speaking about the many different um, benefits they've had from the JLab gel, okay? Over the years of supplying JLab gel, um, the men have been saying, Charles, you've got the JLab gel for the women, looking after the women, what have you got for the men? And I used to always say, because we supply a very high quality of Moringa seeds also. And I used to say, chew the Moringa seeds and drink water. It's like a libido for men. But their men were still like, they were saying, it's not enough. So this year I launched this product here. Okay, this is the natural mystic for men. Okay, right. And this is made from natural plant enzyme as all the Ankara products are 100% natural. Okay, and this is looking after the corpora, corpora cavernosa system in men. And I suggest that if you're listening, Google the corpora cavernosa system, function in men. And this is what the herbs in the natural mystic is looking after. Um, started in January and launched it on the website. The first batch was sold out. By last week, we were sold out and we've just had a replacement batch coming on Friday. So this product is definitely doing something. As Econ also mentioned earlier, it's very important to eat right, okay? And nourish the body. Now I myself, you know, um, through overtraining and doing the plank for some crazy period of time, my hernia popped, okay? And I went to the doctor for an examination and the doctor told me that, yes, you've got hernia, just go down to the hospital. It's a one day in, one day out operation. They'll put a bit of mesh in you, you'll be all right. And I'm thinking a mesh? My body's not gonna make, you recognize a mesh. So my brain is gonna be sending signals to say there's an intruder and there's gonna be a lot of unbalance going on in my body. But I went to the hospital for just to make sure it is a hernia, even though I heard it pop and they scanned me. When they scanned me, they said, yes, young man, you have got a hernia. Um, the only problem is you won't have operation until 12 weeks. That's how long the waiting list. So I said, 12 weeks. I mean, I'm walking okay now because I can, you know, I can get by. In 12 weeks, I'll be crawling in on my knees. And they said, ah, oh, there's nothing we can do. Um, you know, you just have to come back in 12 weeks. Well, luckily I um, was studying the hernia probably about nine months prior. So it was now time for me to put into action. So I went and got the herbs and the roots, and I made the herds and the roots for myself. I went back 12 weeks time. So this is for a scan and stroke operation. And they scanned me. And the doctor looked at me and he says, what are you here for? So I said, I'm here for a lower hernia. He said, who said you got a lower hernia? So I says, well, number one, I heard it pop. My GP confirmed it's a Ernia and the doctor when I came here that booked this appointment scanned and said there's an ernia. He says, well, young man, I can't see anything here. So I says, okay, that means no operation then. And he says, well, I've got nothing to operate on. And I left the hospital. After leaving the hospital, I wanted to be sure that this ernia was healed. So I started doing calisthenics using the nutrition that Ankara supplies okay, to energize my body and help my body to recover fast. And doing calisthenics, you know, I start learned to do pull-ups, started doing muscle-ups, you know, and doing a lot of calisthenics exercise, which involves engaging the core. And now if that hernia was not 
um, healed, it would have popped doing calisthenics. Now, I've been doing calisthenics for over three years now, and I haven't had a problem. So, again, a lot of the times we may have issues and we think it's the end of the world. But as Econ says, there are remedies out there. And one of the first things I'd advise anyone to do, or, my, or what I would personally do, yeah, is detox the body. And after you've detoxed the body, now it's time to start eating right. Alkaline foods, okay? Juicing, okay? And add supplements to your diet. There is one supplement that Ankara doesn't supply, and that is vitamin D. And the reason why we don't supply vitamin D is even though I take the sharp and the brain, okay, I still haven't worked out how to get the sun rays into a bottle or a pill or how to get the sun into a bottle or a pill. So until I can work that out, we don't supply vitamin D supplements. But you can also you get can vitamin that. D from all that Econ has mentioned. And you can also get a little bit of vitamin D from mushrooms. Okay, so our health is very important, especially in these times. The key to what's going on now is a healthy immune and a strong immune system. And that is your only answer, is a strong immune system. So if you go to the Ankara website, okay, there's so much information on our products. We've been going for over 10 years. We're also endorsed by the former Olympic gold medalist and London 2012 Games Ambassador Tessa Sanderson. Okay, so we've been out there for a long time. Um, we've gone out into the broader communities. We've proved our supplements and we're now here back in our community and looking after our people. You know, so we've proven over the years that our supplements, anyone can get benefits from it. Brother, okay. you ready for the questions, brother? Yes, I'm here and ready. All right, excellent. Okay, so there was a little bit of confusion. People were saying, I thought the brother before you said that Moringa was bad for you. Do you want to try and clear that, clear up that confusion? Yes, yes. What's happened is um, when we researched Moringa, it went... We went back to 150 BC and found that Moringa oil was found in the pyramids. And when it was found, it was still good. Also in 2012, when we was in Africa, we saw that, you know, they had genetically modified Moringa in India. Now, um, the Indian strain of Moringa and the African strain of Moringa is two different strains. Okay, and as I did say to say earlier, not all Moringa is the same as we discovered in our early research. So there's a lot of um, Moringa on the market that's even cheaper than Ankara's, okay? And customers are using it and they're saying they're not getting the benefits which they hear us speak about. Okay, when they no use worries. the Ankara Moringa, they start to realize what Moringa really does. So we've searched high and low and gone a very far way to make sure we only supply the best. Our Moringa powder, if you, if you take our Moringa powder out of the tub and a teaspoon, you can see like the static electricity on it. It is electric. So yes, there is a lot of Moringas on the market that's giving Moringa a bad name because Moringa has become a bit of a buzzword over the years. And a lot of people are selling Moringa just to make some money. Ankara sourced Moringa for health benefits. And this That's is it. why we went and found the highest quality that will provide the benefits that you read about Moringa in your research. All right then, brother, nice one. All right, so let's try and get some questions in here. So I see, is it Eli? I don't know if I said your name right. Eli, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah this is early. can you hear me? Yes, yes I can you hear me now? Oh, um, hello, um, brother. Um, I have a greetings. Um, I have a question for you. I have a, my husband um, is got uh, topical eczema from birth. So okay. although he's been given steroid cream like all his life, which he normally use, 
but um, I just want to find out, is there is there any herbal medication you could uh, recommend for him, please? Um, well, I'm what you may call a herbalist. So I myself, through past experience, I'm very mm -hmm. scared of medication. And I've experienced mm -hmm. um, steroids and creams that I was given when I was not well by the doctor. And mm -hmm. they did not help me. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, they made the situation worse. Okay. You know, so um, no, um, you know, so this is my personal experience, you know. Okay. Um, there have been a lot of customers that's given reports that they're using the Moringa oil on their skin. And also, if you're eating healthy, it yeah. inside starts to show outside. So if you're putting healthy foods in, it will start to show out and it will also replenish your mm -hmm. skin if you're eating yeah. food that the body can easily absorb. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, one other question quickly. Um, if you, uh, what would you recommend to detox the, uh, the, the, the body in general for men and for women? Um, there are many natural detoxes out there. Now, our Moringa powder is so strong that if you're not used to Moringa and you mm -hmm. take, you know, a heavy dose of Moringa, mm -hmm. like a tablespoon, you know, yeah. into a mug with um, water, um, mm -hmm. that will detox you. Okay. There are also natural detoxes out there, like their, their bowel blasters, you know, mm -hmm. there's... Um, centipod leaves everyone's body is different okay? okay so the different products will have a different effect on each individual okay all right so do you have all this uh, this on your website yes we've got uh, okay. all the all these the products that i've mentioned is on the ankara website so that's ankara.com okay. okay thank you thank you thank you all right we've got to move on there's quite a few questions uh let's go to SK. SK, you had your hand up. SK, can you unmute yourself? No. Okay. SK, last chance. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Hope, you had your hand up, Hope. Um, the question is, do you deliver in Jamaica? In Jamaica? Yes. We deliver anywhere where there's, there's a post office. So if there's a post office anywhere in the world, we deliver worldwide. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Hope. All right, moving on to, who else has got their hands up? Angel, Angel, if you could unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, my question is quick. My son is five and he's had a hernia from birth uh, shortly after birth. I'm not sure which one, but, um, and he was scheduled to have um, an, an operation. They said it's as small as a buttonhole and it's a quick, like you said, in and out thing. Um, He's still on the waiting list because I haven't found any alternatives. But hearing your story or your your you know what happened, your experience with your you know what could I do for a five year old because he's still a child and his body's still developing. Plus, he does have eating habits. Okay, well, the process that I as, as I said I went through, you have to be consistent with it. Okay, yeah. and you know, it can take a while, okay, because it's a slow but sure. So also your son would have to be trying not to do anything that is strenuous to the area. So um, he's very high energy. He's uh, like on the ADHD kind of spectrum, very high energy from natural sources. I don't give him any sugars or anything like that. It, it will take discipline and it takes consistency. Okay. So what I'd recommend if you go to the Ankara website, um, you'll see a phone number on there and you can phone that number and get in contact with me. Okay, that'd be great, thank okay. you. Okay, and you mentioned that it was on this um, Hidden Science, you know, on this Zoom call where you, you, um, you met me. Thank you very much for your help and I will speak to you soon. You're welcome. 
All right, thank you for that. All right, let's, I'm gonna try and go through some of the questions in the Q&A because there's so many, but I'm gonna try and see if we can get some of them out of here. So uh, Josephine asks, should Moringa oil be diluted? How is Moringa oil diluted for use? Well, I, I never dilute Moringa oil, you know? Um, you know, it's a rich, it's like food for your skin. If you it depends on what on what you're using it for, but if you're using it on the skin, it's easily absorbable by the skin because the skin recognizes it as food, you know. So um I don't see why you would be diluting moringa, you know, unless you wanted to make it stretch or something, but then you lose the effectiveness. So you know, you might want to dilute it with olive oil or something like that, you know, but um, always just use Moringa straight. Okay, this question says, how do you treat arthritis of the legs, please? Again, um, you know, I'm not a medical practitioner, you know, so the best thing I would recommend is to go onto the Ankara website and see what other customers have been saying that's had arthritis. Okay, all right, excellent. All right, so we're coming near the end now. So what I would like is for all of the panelists, if you guys can share your screen so we can see all of you at the same time. So all of the panelists. Let's put my face. <clears throat> e Kong as well, if you're there. Kong. All right, so we're going to try and go through some questions. This now you can, the, we're going to open up the panel for anyone to ask any questions. So, again, if you want to ask a question, if you can raise your hand and then you can ask a question. Oh, and I did say I was going to clear up a bit of uh, confusion because there, there seemed to be a little bit of confusion in the comment section. Econ, if you can unmute your mic as well, brother. Yes, I'm here. Yes, indeed. So hopefully we cleared up some, I wish I, I think my camera's messing up. Let me see if I can, yeah, my cam, camera's messing up. But hopefully we can clear up a bit of the confusion. So some of the cute confusion was around Moringa and Dr. Sabi said that, you know, Moringa's unnatural. I'm hoping that people understand that. So Maxine is asking Moringa, yes or no? So, Here's the thing now, you guys can chime in because this is the, the panel's open for everyone now, yeah? So here's the thing when it comes to um, Dr. Sebi. I agree that he is the master teacher, yeah? Dr. Sebi is the master teacher. However, when we're living in this society, which Dr. Sebi wasn't li living in, Dr. Sebi wasn't living in the UK, we have to make do with what we've got around us. We have to do the best with our environment, yeah? So Dr. Sebi was in Honduras. He had the best, well, a very good environment, very good uh, clean water, clean air. We're not in that environment. Now, mm -hmm. for the people who are very strict with Dr. Sebi's diet, by all means continue to be very strict. For the people who are asking Moringa yes or no, I'm hoping we cleared that up when Charles is saying um, that he's got uh, the highest you know, quality of Moringa. So if you are someone who wants Moringa, you want to go for the highest quality. So it's up to you to answer that question, yes or no. I don't know if you guys want to chime in. Econ, do you want to add to that? Yeah, um, I'm just going to um, I'm just gonna put in this, right? Now, what I've, I, I know that Dr. Sebi has said um, Moringa is not good. He said Okra is not good. He said Kale is not good. Now, the reason why he said Moringa is not natural is because Moringa does yeah. not grow wild okay now many people are saying that you know it's a particular type of moringa and just like how people say you know but it's a particular kind of carrot it's the purple carrot oh no it's a particular kind of corn it's the purple corn it's the white corn no all of the species you cannot find in the wild growing deep in the forest growing not at, not behind your mother and father's pasture I'm not talking about your mother's and father's back garden or front yard. I'm not talking about growing on the plains of Africa. I am talking about the rural areas 
of Africa, of the Central America. You can't find it in these areas. So that's why it's, it is deemed not native to the planet Earth. Now, many people will say, but Moringa worked for me. That's good. I, I can't argue with you. I have no right to tell you Moringa didn't work for you. If it worked for you, it worked for you. But I'm just letting you know what I know and what I have learned. And that is it. I don't want anyone to be upset with me. Anyone that has a Moringa business out there, don't be upset with me, please. I just have to give the people my truth, what I understand to be true in my mind. All right, big up. So again, it comes down to um, the individual making the, the choice. So the point I was making was the fact that we, the, the environment that we live in, for the people who have done my Black Holistic Health course, I call it an obesogenic environment. It's an environment that promotes an unhealthy lifestyle to us. So when we're in this environment, if you're going to be extremely strict with it and say this thing is unnatural, that thing is unnatural, you know what else is unnatural? These phones that we're on. You know what else is unnatural? The laptop that is on your lap right now with all the radiation and it's messing up your women, it's messing up your womb, men, it's messing up your testicles. That is unnatural. But this mm -hmm. is the world that we live in right now. Do you understand? So I uh, get when people are very strict with Dr. Sabi and Dr. Sabi said this and Dr. Sabi said that. But well, what else is unnatural? Masks are unnatural. <laughs> Social distancing is unnatural. Yeah. Do you understand? But it's things that we have to do because this is the society that we live in right now. Social distancing, not leaving your house is unnatural. Yeah. So we have to do the best with what we got, yeah? Go on, Charles. Yeah, and also what I would say, in my years of doing Moringa, I've had nothing but positive results, you know, from people. So, and I've used it myself. I've been using it since 2008, okay? And, you know, I'm, I, I, I believe I'm in very good shape, you know, and I've used it in sports. <clears throat> okay for people in sports so i've never seen a negative reaction with moringa you know i've never i've never seen it as i did say i had uh, heard and i'm um, seeing where they were showing evidence that moringa was genetically modified in india okay i have seen that and heard that from 2012 okay but you know, it, it's, it provides the nutrition, it's got the iron in it, it's got antioxidant, it's got the 90 nutrients and they're all working on a cellular level. So, mm. you know, I personally have not been out into the jungle, you know, um, to check what is out there and what is not out there. So, you know, and Africa is a big place. So it could be there. Yeah, it might not be there. The truth is, I, I haven't been into the jungle, so I can't say it's there and it's not there. Yeah. All right, then, brother. I'm gonna yeah, just. Well, oh, go for uh, go on, Lyndon. No, I just I just like to say um, I do take moringa. I get it from uh, from Africa, uh, a certified company from Africa. So, to be honest with you, uh, in my juices. Yeah, I, I have a juice, a green juice with so many different things in it sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if the moringa is working or not. <laughs> you know, I, I use different things because once you use a combination of different things, you know, in a, in a drink that I do, and it's just become an habit of, for my skin. I used to do like aqua water, bitter gourd, uh, apple cider vinegar, fenugreek, turmeric, uh, sour sap, all these cerise, all these kind of things. Even my mum's drinking cerise now. You know, and she's been drinking for years. You know, I go to my mum's house, her house full of bush and herbs, you know, and she knows exactly which ones they are. But at the end of the day, I want to put in my body what I think is right for me at a time. And all the time, sometimes I can't even understand how come even now I still feel good. You know, it's, 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 I don't know. We, you've got to try trial and error nowadays, you know, so just feel how your body feels when you're doing certain things. But the most important thing is find foods that naturally reduces the blood sugars naturally. And that's important. All right, I've seen a couple hands go up again. These are people 
Sarah says, do what works best for you. I think that's good advice as well. All right, Hope, do you want to ask another question? I'm going to... Hope, do you want to ask another question? To be honest, yeah. Yes, um, I'd just like to ask, one of you mentioned not using rapeseed oil, and I would like if you could explain a little bit, because I do use that due to the fact that I've got um, low, um, high cholesterol. And the second question I would also like to ask is what remedies could I use for high cholesterol? Um, that was me that mentioned about the rapeseed oil. Rapeseed, the rapeseed is not a natural seed. That's the reason why you should not um, consume rapeseed oil. Grape okay. seed oil, on the other hand, comes from um, seeded grapes. That's why it's called grape seed oil. That's what you should use in replacement. Now, the high mm -hmm. cholesterol is basically a buildup of plaque, a buildup of inflammation, a buildup of toxins, which you have ingested via food. So once you cut down on um, the starches and the dairy, if you're eating dairy and the meats and the chickens or the fish or the seafood, whatever it is, you just by cutting out 50% of that, you will see a great, great, great increase in your health. And also not to mention the herbs that I mentioned as well, the red clovers, the, even the ginger is very good, the African ginger, the red, clo the red clover, the yellow dock, the burdock, the dandelion roots, you know, the cascara sagrada, the quassia, the anamu, you know, also known as guinea hen weed, king of the forest. These are all powerful alkaline herbs that will help to dissolve the high cholesterol from the bloodstream. Okay, there's the other what name. You can... Where do I get these things? This has it on new to me. Oh, these, okay. these herbs, these, these are herbs that I will, I will, um, where, brother, where do you think I can list these herbs for everybody to see? Where can I put these herbs? Can you put them in the chat? Can you just list them in the chat? Okay, cool. Go to all, all panelists and attendees. Okay. Then to all panelists and attendees. And if you could list that, that would be amazing. All right. Okay. Econ, can I ask you a question, please? Sis, have you asked the question? Because there are quite a few people that want to ask a question. Oh, yeah, but I'll be very quick with this question, please. You know, you mentioned iron, right? Like to yes. cure diabetes, you know, we have to take iron, like iron should be the lifestyle. But how much quantity, like what's the dose stage we have to take on a daily well, basis? Well, these, the herbs that I've mentioned, mix three, you can mix three at a time, any amount that you want. The more herbs, the more powerful it is. The less herbs, the less powerful and effective it's going to be. So let's say, for example, a quick recipe, 100 grams of yellow dock, 100 grams of salsa spirella, and 100 grams of blue vervain. That's 300 grams. You boil that in 1.5 liters of water. You allow that to steep, strain it, and drink it in the morning, and you drink it at night. They're very bitter. They're disgusting. They don't taste nice. <laughs> but bitter is good for the liver. Bitter yeah. is good for the bloodstream. The reason why we're diabetics and we've got high cholesterol is again yeah. because we need to balance that sugar that we need. We need the yeah. sugar, but we need to balance it out with what we don't like, which is the bitters. Right. Yeah. And I saw someone yeah. earlier say, I can't take Moringa, it's too bitter. That is the one you should be taking then. Take if it, exactly. Oh, oh, also, it. sorry, Leon, also um, before we get the cholesterol, High cholesterol or cholesterol is usually, as um, Econ said, it's, um, you know, fat and stuff build up in the arteries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, okay. So um, <clears throat> again, with the herbs that can help, you know, there's also other things out there that may help also. <clears throat> So, Charmaine, you had your hand raised, Charmaine? Yes, I did. Thanks, Leon. Thanks for today as well. It's brilliant. Um, Brother Charles, you mentioned phosphatidyl or something, and I wanted to hear, did you say choline or you didn't say, did you say chlorine? Yeah, chlorine and phosphatidyl serine and phosphatidyl chlorine. Chlorine, as in like the same flower. So how mm -hmm. is that good for you if it's from the same family as fluorine then? That's what I was just... 
like fluorine and fluoride and it's because that's in the same what, family. What, what spelling are you using? It's not fluoride or um, fluorine. How um, are you spelling what? it then? Okay. Oh, it is choline. It's all right then, yeah. yeah. C-H-O-L-I-N-E. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said chlorine. No, give thanks no. then. That's okay. I was wondering and, how that was going to be. And serene as well. And phosphatidyl serene. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've heard so of they're serene. both there. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Give thanks. Thank you. Um, I think Econ just posted the, the list. So if anyone can copy and paste that so everyone can get that, because I know the, there's more messages coming through. All right. Let's see who else we can get on. Cam Camaria, is that your name? Can you unmute your mic? Hi, good day. My name is Camaria. Thank you so much. I have because I live in a cold country. I live in Canada. And it's actually snowing right now. So I always think about the sun and being a melanated person. What about the concentration of the sun? Like it's gloomy, it's, you know, for, I don't know, eight months of the year. So is it, when, when it comes to recharging our skin, is it the concentration of the sun or is it just light in general that we should be outside and getting, just being in the sun or have to be in a hot, we have to be in a hot country? Like what, what is it about um, our melanin and what is it about the sun that we need the most? Uh, I reckon I could answer that one. Like the sun emits different types of radiation. It emits ultraviolet radiation, UVA, UVB, UVC, and it emits um, infrared radiation. Now it emits these different types of radiation at different times of the day. So at different times of the day, your melanin can absorb different types of radiation. Now what's powerful about melanin, I know Econ says melanin don't exist. We might have to go into that. What's powerful about melanin is it absorbs all of the different types of radiation from the sun. The only way you're going to get all of the different types of radiation is if you get um, access to the sun at different times of the day. So being out there in the morning, being out there in the afternoon, being out there just before the sun goes down. That way you're getting a, a wide range of the radiation, which is light, that your melanin or carbon, as Econ says, can absorb. Yeah. So um, just to get around uh, a holistic approach of the sun, we need to be out there as much as possible. And this is another reason why I go back to our environment has changed. Um, we as black people, we used to be out in the sun the whole day. We used to work outside. We used to be out in the sun. So there wasn't no, okay, let's go inside and, oh, we need to shade. We used to be out there all the time. But now obviously because the environment has changed, we're indoors more than outdoors. So I'd suggest trying to get as much as possible. I don't know if anyone wants to contribute to that. Thank you. You're 100% right, brother. 100% right. Like at the end of the day, the sun is the life giver. If the sun disappeared right now, we're all dead within one, one second if the sun disappeared right now. In the very second that the sun disappeared, we'll freeze to death. So the sun, like you said, you just got to be outside as much as you possibly can, getting as much of the sun as you can, because that's what feeds your carbon cells. You know, carbon, I'm not saying that melanin doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying that instead of using the word melanin, let's start using the word carbon. You know, people are using the word melanin, but what they're actually trying to say is carbon. And carbon is what um, makes us, if you want to say, black. And the more carbon, the more carbon or the more sunlight you have, the darker you become. You see Italians that go out into the sun, they get darker. You see people that live in, in the equator of the planet Earth, which is the center of the Earth in Africa. They look dark. So the people who are the, the most darkest beings on the Earth, they need that sun. They need the most out of everyone on the Earth. Everyone still needs it. However, Black people need it even more so because it helps the blood to be loose, to be free, to be to flow. A lot of people in Africa are not dying because um, the sun is is basically melting their blood. If they come over to the UK, because remember the blood is like water, solid, liquid, and it can turn to gas. So when you are in a cold environment, you get high blood pressure. When you're in a warm environment, you heard the, the, the elderly people say, once I go to a warm country, 
my diabetes kind of goes down, my high pressure kind of goes down because your blood is being, has been melted. It's very free, it's very loose. So that's the reason why we need it the most. Very important, very important. Carol, you had your hand up, Carol. Oh, sorry, yes, I'm here, sorry. Um, yes, I was going to ask, which my friend has actually answered about vitamin D. Now, I don't like taking tablets, although I take tablets. Vitamin D, I've never kind of like what to take, but I want to know, is there any foods with vitamin D? And she said no. I've just, I've just put inside of the chat a list yeah. of herbs that contain mm -hmm what they want to call remember we didn't black people didn't call it vitamin d right we didn't call it vitamin d we just called it the energy of the sun so the okay. reason why the herbs contains the energy of the sun is because when the sun is out it gives these herbs the same energy or the same power as yeah. the sun and right. the herbs that i've given you are herbs that contain iron there are other herbs that contain or eat calcium from the ground. There are other herbs that, that eat gold. There are other herbs that eat zinc. There are other herbs that eat magnesium from the soil because the sun shines on the, on the soil and then the yeah. soil is given the, the, the minerals and the minerals are absorbed through the plants. They call this process iron trosphorosis. When a plant converts a mineral, a rock, into yeah. a liquid digestible substance, so when you're okay. consuming a plant that contains iron, you are addressing your blood and your blood is full of um, carbon cells. It's full of red blood cells. And those red blood cells, my sister, <clears throat> those yeah. red blood cells are predicated upon the iron mineral. Okay. If you're, if you was talking about your uterus to me, I would yeah. tell you herbs that contain zinc. If you was talking about your bones to me, I will tell you herbs that contain calcium. Do you understand? So if you're yeah. talking about your blood, I'm going to tell you herbs that contain iron. And iron is what is the mineral that conveys oxygen to your brain, to your pineal gland, and it creates an environment in your body where you can become relaxed, where you become clear-minded, you're not fatigued, you have a lot of energy, you're not tired. This is yeah. the same effect that the sun gives to us as well. What I've sort of like noticed, I did try and and look, look you up on my Kindle and it wasn't bringing you up and I tried on Scribed, so I need to find you. I, I kind of like know how to find you. I found your Instagram page. And what was interesting as well was the fact that you said, the gentleman, Lyndon, he said at the beginning and it made sense really, my grandma, she's 90, she, she used to always swear by bitter things and it's bitter things that is good for you, isn't it? Yes. So 100%. in your body, so that yeah, bit, that bitters. made me, yeah, bitter. That, oh my god. Every day, every yeah. day. Yeah. So that made sense. So I'm gonna definitely look yeah. all all of you up, and I'm gonna join um Leon's um hidden hidden academy. Yeah, thanks, like again, thanks, thanks again, Leon. Thanks again, Leon. Hessa. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Leon. But can thanks. I just say something on on bitters because yeah. I yeah. know a lot for our lives we're not used to the bitters. When we're, we're more used to the sweet stuff and and uh, salty stuff, yeah? yeah? But with bitters now, what you've got to try and do is find ingredients like cinnamon that you can add to, that can add flavour to it, add fresh mint to it, infuse it with fresh mint, you know? There are fruits that we can add to certain things like blueberries, dark berries. You can add yeah. to some of your bitters and blend it down and still drink it the same way to so just to take away that bitters. Because don't get me wrong, there's one called bitter gourd, yeah? Karela or bitter melon. That thing yeah. is bitter. Yeah, I gave it to a family member the other day to, to use it for their uh, blood sugar, yeah? They opened the bottle, when they opened it, they smelled it, they threw it away. They thought it was off because they wasn't used to yeah. it, you know? Yeah. I said, what are you throwing away for? This is what it's supposed to be like, because you're not used to it. So yeah. the, the bitter stuff, yeah? Guys, you can infuse certain things to give it flavor, natural, nice flavor, you know? So don't be afraid of the bitters. It's just a palate change over a period of time. It really yeah. is. You've got to train your mind and your body. Seriously. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be disciplined. Thank you so much. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. All right. Leon, I've, I've got a question. I did put my hand up. Who is this? Who's speaking? Carol. Carol, have, yes. you, have you asked yes. the question already? Because uh, yes. no, no, it's not the same, Carol. Yeah, I'm a different 
Okay, yeah, but there's another Carol. That's not me. I yeah. I had my hand. Thank you. I just want to ask. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for all the the, the knowledge. It's amazing. Can I just ask Charles, in Jamaica, they're growing um, organic um, moringa. What are you aware of it? And what is the difference between the moringa there? Because some people mm. like, I contacted um, a family member. She said, oh God, we have it in our, in our back garden from the tree. And, you know, we had it to our, our diet and stuff like that. So what is the difference between the one yeah. you are producing and the organic one, which is growing in Jamaica. Okay, well, they realized, they, they, they acknowledged the Moringa in Jamaica in 2013. Um, you know, there was, someone flew in and was giving a lecture in Montego Bay. And on the way from the airport, he saw the Moringa trees on the airport road. And where he got to do the talk, went to do the talk, he saw that there was a um, Moringa tree in the yard. Mm. So he was saying he was surprised to see the Moringa in Jamaica. He didn't know that Jamaica had Moringa. This was 2013. This is when everybody started going, Moringa, they call it down there. Mm. So by the time he finished the lecture, the, the tree in the yard was literally sabotaged. You know, he was telling, talking about the benefits of Moringa. And by the next morning, all the trees on the airport road was literally sabotaged. So... The Moringa, um, in my research on Moringa in Jamaica, I found that it was bought there with the, by the Indians when they also bought the ganja to Jamaica, okay, the marijuana. So a lot of the strains of Moringa in Jamaica is the Indian strain, although you do have a few people that's got the African strain. But with Moringa, you know, there's an art which I learned from the farmer, a farmer, my farmer, who is an elder, who learned about Moringa from his grandfather, which handed down to his father, which handed down to him. And with the Moringa leaf, there's a certain time when the leaf should be picked and when it shouldn't be picked to get the best quality from it. Right. So the most majority of the strains of Moringa in Jamaica is the Indian strain. Okay. Okay, so if it has, does it have the, the, the nutrients, the same 90 um, nutrients as the one from yours from Africa or? Well, well they, they, they should do. However, when I've been testing the Moringa um, from Jamaica and from many other parts of the world, I haven't found them to be as potent as the strain that I use. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, and again in um, Jamaica they don't use the powder that much because it takes nearly about say half a kilo of leaves because the moringa leaves is very small it's like the size of your thumbnail and it takes about half a kilo of leaves to crush to crush up to make around a teaspoon of powder. Wow. So when it's in the powder it's more potent because it's like it's compressed so you're putting more in. You know, so the amount of leaves that it would take to make a teaspoon of powder, if you was cooking or you was making, although Moringa doesn't work very well with heat, but if you was making something, you wouldn't put that amount of leaves in that it would take to make a teaspoon of the powder. Okay, that's okay. great. I've, I've got you online. So I think I'll just maybe have a, have a conversation with you. Because we have to move on. So everyone, all the panelists, if you can just post your social media handles so people can follow you online, because we're not going to be able to get through all of the questions. But I do want to try and get through to some other people. Some other people have had their hands up for quite some time. So if the panelists just post whatever you want to post in the chat, whether it's your email, whether it's your social media, just so <laughs> people's questions don't get answered, they can still get a hold of you. All right, moving on. Tessa. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Tessa. Um, okay, yeah, so. I just wanted to clarify. Um, I think it was Econ said about carrots are not very good. Or maybe I heard him wrong, whether he could just clarify that. And if the panelists can do like quick answers, because we're, we're trying to get out of here yeah. now. So is, is carrot, is, did you say carrots weren't good? Carrots, yeah, I said, yeah, carrots are not good. They contain too much starch. If you okay. juice carrots, and then if you juice carrots, and you leave the juice of the carrots on your windowsill for 24 hours and you come back, you'll see a separation. 
At the top, you'll see the liquid content of the carrots. And at the bottom, you see a very slimy, gooey substance. That's the starch. When okay. that enters your body, it's clogging up your arteries, your capillaries, and your veins. I love carrots. <laughs> Thank you, Tessa. Thank you. Thank you. But a nut squash is a replacement. Now, I see a couple of people saying, um, why is this bad? Why is that bad? I just want to clar clarify that because someone said they had their hand up and they're asking, why is aloe vera bad? Again, in this environment, you got to you got to do the best you can. If you're someone who follows Dr. Sebi like religiously, then you should have his list and you should know what to eat and what not to eat. However, we live in what I call an obesogenic environment. It's an environment that is promoting an unhealthy lifestyle to us. So in this environment, we have to try and do the best we can. So when someone says, um, you shouldn't eat moringa, you shouldn't take moringa, and then someone's saying, well, I've got a high, um, the best quality of moringa, it's up to you to decide whether or not yeah. you should take it. So there's no, there's no good and bad list in this obesogenic environment. Because whatever we say, if you understand the environment that we live in, they'll just make it obesogenic. So for example, Moringa, if, if it's true that it was once natural, what happened? We live in an obesogenic environment where people want to make money off of you know, food. So if Moringa's popular, guess what? The, the powers that be are going to monopolize it and yeah. sell it, and that's going to be bad. It's the same with CMOS. CMOS gets popular and in tutus you see Europeans selling CMOS and it's a different type of CMOS. But Dr. Sebi said CMOS, but in a couple of years time, it might not be a good idea to eat CMOS because the powers that be have taken it, monopolized it, and now all of a sudden the CMOS is not CMOS. Do we understand that people? I hope that makes sense. So in this, yeah. in this environment, we have to just try and do the best that we can. We have to try and do the best that we can. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Very quick questions and quick answers. Let me see if I've got. We'll try and do a last couple questions now. Is it Namian? Namian? Can you unmute your mic? Is it Namian? I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Go in once. Namian, no. Nope. All right, Karen. Karen, would you like to ask a question? Karen. You can unmute your mic, Karen. All right, we've got to move on. Christine. You like to ask, ask a question, Christine? Ah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, yeah, it's great hearing about all the different herbs that um, would be really good to use. But I just want to know where can we get these herbs from, or where would you recommend we get these from? Well, Ankara's got their website. Ekong's got yeah. his. I got mine as well. And Lyndon's got his, so you've got yeah, free, yeah, yeah. We've all got different stuff. So the best thing to do is go to each one of our websites and see what you like. I've got a vast range of different products and services on my website as well. Uh, so as uh, Charles and Econ, yeah. So you have the freedom of choice. Great, freedom. thank you very much. Pleasure. Yes. All right, two more. Two more. Let me see. Hello, guys. Hey. What's um, your name? My my name is uh, Kwasi Nyamye. Anyway, we look in we look in the program together. Anyway, right, I would like to ask a question to the brother uh, Ekro. Um, uh, technically, the brothers say that um, we should eliminate certain food uh, uh, in our diet. But um, for example, I'm from Ivory Coast. Okay, and he's talking about people from uh, Caribbean people from uh, Asia, you know what I mean? I think diet is different, okay? How can you say like, we should eliminate certain things if in, in a different region, uh, region uh, the food or diet are different, you know what I mean? And also talking about cassava and yam, when you say that there are no 
they are not natural, okay? But for what I read, maybe I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. They come from South America, okay? Talking from um, uh, in the indigen, uh, I don't want to say indigen, I mean like people who used to live there, okay? And then they brought it in Africa, okay? And mm. how grandparents used to eat mm. uh, and, and cassava, yam, and they, they really feel good, you know what I mean, with that. But when you say to eliminate it, where, where does it come from? Where, you know, um, what is the, the question is, how can you say that? You know what I mean? To eliminate it. Yeah, I, it's, it's that, very... It doesn't grow. It, okay, carry on. Sorry for that. Sorry. So basically, cassava does not grow by itself. Anyone who is a farmer, I've seen cassava. I've been to Africa. I've seen cassava growing. Cassava doesn't just come just like sour soap comes by season, just like uh, key limes with the seed comes by season, just like julie mangoes. These things come every season. Cassava doesn't grow by season. It's just like sugarcane. If man stops to cultivate sugarcane today, there would be no sugarcane on the planet. This is easy knowledge. If man stopped cultivating sugarcane, mm. sugarcane would not grow. It's the same for cassava. It's the same for carrot. It's the same for everything that is unnatural. It's very hard to believe, I understand. It's, it's like cognitive mm. dissonance. Something that a lot of people are, have been grown with. Your granddad ate it. Your father's fathers ate it. It's, I understand it's hard to believe, but this product contains starch, sugar, and cyanide. This is researched, not by black people. White people have researched it themselves. And they've told us black people that cassava wasn't made by African people. It's made by the Portuguese and it contains a higher amount of um, cyanide. This is research things. I'm not telling you from my own knowledge. These things are not causing black people to be able to think. It's not allowing them to, to, to reason well. It's causing them diabetes, inflammation, high blood pressure, obesity, constipation. Cassava is one of the foods that is detrimental to the black diaspora and is killing us left right and center it does not go nowhere when you put it in your stomach it stays there it just purificates it it decays it rots and it's not going anywhere that's why our stomachs most of us is very huge because not just the cassava we're eating rice we're eating shaki we're eating oxtail we're eating cow foot we're eating all kinds of carcass and starches and we expect to be to be healthy it's impossible. I'm going to add to that. It's impossible. What you said about these foods causing us um, type 2 diabetes and that sort of stuff. Like, I'm not as strict as Econ when it comes to diet and that sort of stuff. I do um, think that Dr. Sebi, Dr. Leila Africa and Dr. Inky, those are the master teachers when it comes to this holistic health thing. So I'm just a student to those guys. So, I, But I'm not as strict because I understand the environment that we live in. So we live in a different environment to the, the environment that Dr. Sebi was promoting this stuff in. That being said though, if you are someone who eats the foods that Ekong says not to eat and you are energized and you don't have any dis-ease, then I think me and Ekong can agree that whatever you're consuming is obviously working for you. Agreed. If you're, like, you're energized and you don't have any issues with your health, then go with what you're eating. However, cool. if you're eating these things, um, that mine, mine things, was a simple question. It was like to be a little bit uh, like uh, have some some knowledge from from the brother. That's it. Um, okay, all right. But I hope that makes and, sense. And and just to, and just to um just add one last point, I can give you replacements for these things. And these replacements, as um Leon is saying, these these replacements. They're easily accessible. Everyone can get access to quinoa. Most people can get access to fonio because it grows in West Africa. Fonio is indigenous. Fonio comes from West Africa. It's from there. So you can use that in replacement of your cassava because what do you people use cassava for really? Let's be honest. We turn it into a starch mush and we swallow that. We don't even chew it. We swallow it. That's how African people eat. 
We uh, turn it into a ball and we swallow. So if you want to replace that, just go to Fonio, go to the quinoa. You can still make the same thing from these things. And these things grow naturally and they, and they don't rot and decay in the stomach. They are well, natural. Well, we have to move on. Sorry, okay. brother. Thank you. Thank you for your question, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. There's quite a few more. Le I'm just going to do three more. So if I don't get to your apologies, but remember, this is once a month. And you, I'm sure that the panelists, the panelists, they've been posting their social media and how you can contact them. But I'm going to try to get to three more people. Um, Shirley. Can you unmute your mic, please, Shirley? Yeah. I asked the question about aloe vera, actually. I'm the one, and you've answered it. Aloe okay. vera is bitter, and I've known aloe vera since I was a child in the Caribbean, and I am surprised that it is not good for you. <laughs> I'm really surprised. All right, so again, when it comes on to the good and bad, you got to understand the environment that we live in. These things are bad for us, but we're all on them. Yes, yeah, I understand yeah. that. So if it's so with aloe vera, you it's up to you. If it works for you, use it. If it works for you, use it. So if someone if 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 it's on Dr. Sabi's don't use list, and you say rah, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe that's bad. Well, these are bad as well. These have when we're talking about electromagnetic radiation and all the radiation, everyone's talking about five G. All of our phones are going to be five G in a minute. I and accept I, that. And, and about the phone and the computer, and yes. Can I add something to that, please? Let me just um, um, finish with the good strong guys. The <laughs> strong guys. My mother is 97. 97. And I'm eating what she's ever, you know, I don't eat meat, okay? Um, <laughs> I am mostly plant-based. Um, white sugar, no. My uncle has just passed away, my mother's brother. Um, and he was older than my mother, so he must have been about 98, 99 when he passed away. So I really am shocked that things like is it sweet potatoes are not, are not good either. Can I, can I just can I just put in something quickly, please? Um, basically, yes, the mobile phones is bad for us. Microwaves are bad for us. Um, so many things are bad for us. But I just want people to understand that. What can you control? If we all said we're going to throw away our mobile phones now, we wouldn't be able to get this knowledge that we're getting now. Yes. But can we, can we control what goes into our mouth? Yes, yes, yes. we can. Yeah. I'm happy so about that. So if we yeah. can control what goes into our mouth, we should think. We should just try to think for a moment and think about the things that we're eating because some people's grandparents are live, live to a very old age. But when they were 16, when they were 10, they didn't have the foods that we have today. So we have to put that into consideration. Um, thirdly, we have to understand that aloe vera, people don't go into the forest to find aloe vera. That's growing in people's plant pots. That's growing outside your back garden. You can't find aloe vera growing in the wild. Again, everything that I'm asking people to, to consume, these are things that just grow in the wild. And aloe vera, it doesn't grow in the wild. And how comes that tuna or nopalas, how comes that is not pushed as much as aloe vera? Because aloe vera has been patented. Aloe vera is something that someone created. It's not something that grows out of the ground like agave. If you go onto the internet and type in agave cactus, it's almost as big as two, three men stacked up on top of each other. That's natural. The nopalas, you can find it grown in Ghana, Africa, Brazil, Honduras. You don't find aloe vera growing everywhere like that. So people have to take these things into consideration. All right. Also, Leon, can I just say, um, with the mobile phones, the computers and everything, what's very important, a nutrient that's very important for us to take if we're worried about these things. Um, shungai was mentioned. Shungai is good. As you can see, my shungai is here. Okay. But yeah. iodine. Yeah. Iodine helps the body to reject radiation. Now you can get iodine from sea moss. Mm -hmm. and you can also get iodine from the Ankara red algae. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. the purple sea moss will be on Ankara's website Monday. All right. Florence, can you unmute your mic? I'm going to get to you, Bianca. I can see Hi. you, Bianca. Hello. Hi, Florence. 
Hi. Um, I just want to say that I really, really enjoyed this um, call. I'm from Connecticut. I live in the United States. And I wasn't in front of my laptop. I'm actually driving to another destination, but I could not miss this call because um, I just wanted to say um, I have been studying um, Dr. Sebi's, um, you know, just work. And along with his work, um, I came across like other literature just to help me with my condition. A couple of years ago, I had a very bad case of H. pylori and it turned into irritable bowel syndrome. So I went through so many phases of just um, trying to find myself and trying to heal myself. I've been on a vegan diet. I've been on a vegetarian diet. I've been on, you know, the alkaline diet. And what I had paired with the alkaline diet was um, literature from the blood type diet. I was going through the list of, you know, what was recommended for Dr. Sebi, just, you know, trying to keep my pH balance. And for some reason, I wasn't really getting better. So I started doing more research and I came across a book um, the four blood type diet book, Eat Right for Your Blood Type by a doctor called uh, Dr. Peter Dialamo and partnered with alkaline and what my body naturally wants because I'm an O type person, it worked. So my question to you all would be, have you ever noticed eating according to your blood type also complements an alkaline diet or have you not crossed that bridge yet? Um, brothers, you, bro, can I, should bro, I go or are you gonna go? Anyone, but just make it quick, please. Cause we want to try and get- All right. I, I, feel, I feel that anyone on this planet earth, yeah, that consumes things that are high in starch, high in, you know, cholesterol, high in, um, you know, in like mucus, it's going to cause damage. So regardless of whether you're black, white, Chinese, Inuit, uh, blue, black, yellow person, if you eat something that clogs up your arteries, your capillaries, your veins, and causes indigestion and constipation, it doesn't matter what blood type you are. You're going to get hurt. Do you get me? Because when I went to Honduras, I saw white, black, Chinese, all types of people were going over to Dr. Zabi's Usha village to get healing. So I understand what you're saying because I know that for white people, they can digest dairy better than we can. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I, I agree with what you're saying. However, even white people suffer from the same ailments as black people do, the same ailments as Chinese people do. You know, so there, there's a thin line between what you're saying. Anyone else on the panel want to add to that? Yeah, well, the, the blood with most um, ailments, once you can get the blood pure and clean, you're on your way to healing. So... Yep. Um, what this lady is saying about taking care of the blood, it, it, you know, it makes sense to me. You know, the blood yep. is very important when healing. That's true. Talking about blood types, I've just posted a link to, um, if you click on that link and go to the Hidden Science of Black Women's Health, it's one of my previous lectures. I talk about blood types in that, in that lecture, so you guys can check that out. All right, moving on. Bianca, I see you. You're, you're next after Laureen. Laureen? You want to unmute your mic, Lorene? Last chance, Lorene. Hi. Hey. Finally. Oh my gosh, I got through. Oh my God, you don't understand. All evening. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Right. I'm speaking on behalf of my daughter. And I really, really appreciate that you got to me. And uh, let me take my glasses off. So, my daughter's 33. Last year, she um, was misdiagnosed with an ectopic pregnancy and she had to have a partial tube removed. And she had to reluctantly take methotrexate because they hadn't taken away all of the pregnancy. She's been diagnosed with type O um, blood type and had to have antity injections. She's got a fibroid, which is over seven centimetres. 
and endometriosis, what can she do to prepare her body for starting a family? Iodine and zinc. Iodine um, and zinc. Iodine and zinc. And, 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 and also I would suggest that she fasts as well. She does a, a 12 day fast as well. Okay. And she must she must fast using our iron fluorine tea, which is available at eatolivenottodie.com. Yeah, and yeah. also and also fasting on the sea moss because it contains a lot of iodine. Iodine, iodine, because this is why the re this is the reason why we called our um sea moss and bladder rack endocrine because okay. iodine addresses your endocrine system your endocrine yeah. system is all your glands your mammary glands which are your breast your pineal mm -hmm. gland your pituitary gland your hypothalamus gland your prostate gland your uterus gland so it will address that area and in regards to the zinc there's a herb called dead and wake dead and wake and there's okay. another herb also called red clover yeah. These substances, these herbs should be turned into teas and she should drink them every single day for the rest of her life. This is not even something that, you know, she should be drinking just for one day. She should be drinking it every day forever because what has happened to her, you know, is, is that's not the way she was created, to, 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 to say the least. They have taken something from her. So she has to be making sure that she's topping up her zinc every day, topping up her iodine every single day. All right, and her iron as well. I've put I've put in the chat a list of iron herbs. I don't know if you yes, saw it. I've, I've All of those iron this. herbs, they, they must be drank as well every day because the blood needs cleaning. The blood is dirty. It's like mud. So she yeah. needs to cleanse that blood, cleanse it, clean it, clean it, clean it, so that the body can start doing the, the normal functions that it's supposed to be doing. Right. It's very important. Thank you, brother. Lyndon, someone's asking. One sec, uh, please. One sec. She can also check out the J Lab gel on the Ankara website. Okay, um, and that's nutrition for the whole of the womb area. Okay, so the J Lab gel. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Thank, Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Bianca. Can you unmute your mic, Bianca? Bianca, going once. Going twice, Bianca. Sorry. You there? All right, I'm going to take... There you are. Bianca. Hi, brother. Hi, brother Leo. <laughs> oh, finally. You're right. Um, so my son, he's 14 years old. He's had asthma all of his life. And the doctor's basically saying that he's going to have to take an inhaler all of his life. And he's literally said to me, he ain't taking it no more. And I just feel like the chemical's doing something to him. It's not good for him. I have spoken to the GPs and they says this is not something that he needs to come off. They keep saying that he needs to, by all means, stay on the inhaler. I feel like he's just taking something that's just not good for him. I don't know if you guys agree with the doctor or what I can do in terms of his asthma because he's 14 years old. He is quite like athlete, like he does do his exercises and stuff. He, I know that he probably needs to do more, but we are in lockdown, so it's a bit hard. He's, he can't do that much sports. But in terms of foods or herbs or anything, what can I do? Because I think, it, I hate to say the words, but I think it's damaging him slowly. I feel like... he he's been on inhalers since he was one years old which is oh. and he's 14 sister yeah. sister i would i would say yeah that it's driving me mad number number one sister he has to change the remember a lot of people like yeah. to say how do you cure diabetes how do you cure yeah. gout how do you cure asthma but we have to ask the real question how did we get diabetes how did we yeah. get asthma how did we get gout so we exactly. have to first focus on the things that the child is consuming. So if he's consuming dairy, that's crazy for the lungs. You don't yeah. want that. If he's consuming meat, you don't want that. If he's consuming yeah. starches, you don't want that. Now, in regards to the herbs that he should be drinking to cleanse the lungs, it's called mullein leaf. M-U-L-L-I-E-N. Mullein leaf. Create a decoction from mullein leaf and make him drink that every single day 
one cup twice a day. And that will alleviate yes. him of the mucus in his bronch in his bronchial tubes and his lungs. Because the doctor's saying yeah, that it's I... genetic. The doctor's saying that um, so I'm not asthmatic, but his dad's as- asthmatic and everyone in his dad's side of his family is asthmatic. So the doctor was like, you, you, it's just tough. You've just been born with an asthmatic child. Deal with it. And it's just, yeah. I'm, not as- as- I'm not asthmatic. So it's like, oh, I want to really? cure something and get it out of his system because I'm not asthmatic. So I'm just thinking, I've gave birth to a child who's, who's ill and how can I remove it? And I'm tired of him being on these inhalers. I- Bianca, yeah, I think the best thing you should do is listen to what Ekong has said, you know, <clears throat> and, try, and try. Because my daughter, when she was 13, 14, she was asthmatic as well, okay? And this is like uh, four or five years ago. And since I've been on my journey of reverse my type 2 diabetes, I've gone more of a, a healthier way. And because my daughter used to come to the events with me, uh, oh, she used to God. see and hear people talking healthy. So my daughter's 17 now, she has a detox days, she has cleansing days, she has days where she just drink water, she has intermittently fasting days, and she's 17, and she doesn't use an inhaler anymore, she doesn't use it for years, so That's she's excellent. changed things, and she's seen things, even with, when she became through her teenage years, she had bumps on her face and stuff like that, she started to cleanse herself, her body internally, and then these days when it would go, and then she'd eat her biscuits and stuff, like she's not supposed to eat a pizza, then it would come back, so she was testing herself what she was having now she knows how to get the spots and get rid of them do you understand me it's it's all about what econ says what you put in your mouth all right That's for some people more. let's try and squeeze out two more everyone please. One, other, one other thing leon it's important to consume water a good amount of water yes okay all right all right thank you thanks thank you uh you you lily don't know if I said your name right. Can you unmute your... Wow. Your... Wow. Good evening, Good evening, gentlemen. I have a question. I drink um, Moringa leaf. I make a tea. Am I wasting the leaves? Should I be grinding the leaves? Okay, well, with the leaves... Um, yeah. Basically, you, 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 with Moringa, you want to apply minimal heat because the heat takes out a lot of the nutrition. Okay. Okay. So with the leaves, um, you know, if you really want to get the best out of the leaves, if you leave the leaves to soak in water. Okay. Overnight, and then say be drinking that water, you know, but okay. heat, heat and Moringa you know, it, help, it it starts losing nutrition. So you're not getting all the nutrition once you start adding heat to it. After she soaks- I also make a cocktail with the guinea hen and the soursop leaf. So am I not doing it right? Um, the guinea hen can be, you can you can boil the guinea hen to get it to release its nutrients. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but with moringa and heat, you have to be very careful. Um, like if I'm making a cup of tea with moringa powder, I boil the kettle and I let the kettle simmer for about five, ten minutes before I use the water. Oh, so I just brew it. Yeah. Ah, oh, so I shouldn't be making this concoction with guinea hen and um, soursop. Well, the gu- guinea hen is very good. Uh, yeah, and soursop mm. leaf is very good. You know, they can take more heat than what the moringa can take. Okay, I, yeah. I get you. I hear yeah, you. Thank with, you so with much. Me, I, I, take, I, I take the moringa powder and I just put it straight into my water and drink it with my juicing. I just blend it all down. I, 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 don't, I don't have the powder, you see. I just bring the leaves back from the islands or from Florida when I go down. Okay, I see. So, so, yes, all Please. right. Okay. But I'll be visiting your website. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to one more, Maureen. 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 Hi there. Hi there. I've um, listed my, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Brilliant. Um, I've listed my, my question a couple of times. I don't know if anyone can hear. I'm um, sorry, I have been able to read it. It's regarding discoid eczema. Does anyone have any advice on how to get rid of those that like, skin lesions? Any Again, the diet. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. And usually when it comes on to eczema, it's again to do with dairy. 
you know, dairy can um, cause inflammation that will cause skin eruptions. Mm-hmm. It, it, it sounds so cliche, but it is to do with the diet. It is really okay. to do with the diet. Even though it's, it's called, even though it's discoid, as opposed to ordinary, as opposed to, I mean, I don't know how many varieties, varieties of eczema there are, but this is like so. Yeah, all, all skin conditions, all yeah. skin conditions are a reflection of your blood. All skin conditions are a reflection of your blood. And what is your blood? Your blood is the sum total of what you put in your mouth on a daily basis. It's as simple as that. So Mm. um, make sure you're drinking, again, your bitters. That's how you clean the blood. Cleaning the blood, you're going to use the bitters to do that. And once you start drinking your bitters every day, after seven days, you're going to see a very, very huge improvement in your skin. And we also have a product on our website, eattolivenottodie.com, called Skin for Life. It's an oil that contains batana and olive oil. This is something that you use topically on top of the skin. However, this is superficial if you are not addressing the blood. Yeah. Okay? Mm. You must address the blood first. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I know I see loads of hands and that sort of stuff, but we'll be here, we'll be here forever. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank the panel. Everyone's been so on point. Now, I'm going to show you what we got coming up. Don't leave just yet, because a lot of people were talking about CMOS. That is one of our events, and Ekong is going to be on that one as well, along with the Naturally You coach, Leah Salmon. So you do not want to, you do not want to miss that. The secret science of CMOS is going to be very, very powerful Thanks all the guests. Thanks all the people that ask questions. You guys have got these guys' details, social media, emails. Please don't leave yet because I'm going to be telling you what we got coming up. So I'm just going to share my screen now and tell you what we've got coming up. So these are the things. If you, if you enjoyed what you saw today, we've got some very, very powerful events. Can you see that? Is that sharing? Can you see it? All right, so this is what we got coming up. So please follow us on social media, The Hidden Science Academy at Instagram, Facebook, The Hidden Science Academy, and you can watch some of our previous lectures. A lot of people talking about blood today. I talk about blood types on The Hidden Science of Black Women's Health. That's on vimeo.com forward slash The Hidden Science Academy. Check out The Hidden Science of Black Women's Health. A lot of information on there. We talk about stem cells, talk about fibroids, talk about all that sort of stuff. Information that will blow you away. If you want to follow me at the scientist online, I'm on Instagram at the scientist online. If you want to follow me, come follow me. And this is what we got coming up now. This was a free webinar. We will be doing this once a month. So please tell your people, tell your friends, tell your family members. If you thought this was valuable, please share the links that we're posting in the chat. So my sister will post some links in the chat. Please share these. Make sure people register. Make sure they get in the confirmation email so they get this next time. Please, you don't want to miss this. Next time, we're going to have um, Dr. Mark Walcott, for the people who know about Dr. Mark Walcott. So every every month, we're going to have powerful, powerful guests. And we, the Hidden Science Academy, we run a Black Holistic Health course, and it's actually available on our site now as an e-learning course. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. People, you do not want to miss this. The secret science of CMOS. A lot of talk about CMOS today. A lot, a lot of people talk about the 92 minerals that it has, apparently, out of the 102 minerals that, you know, gets rid of all the mucus. We're going to go through the science, the secret science of CMOS. Is it all mythology or is there truth behind it? We're going to break it all the way down using science as the backbone. You don't want to miss that. My sister, that link tree link, you just click on that, click on secret science of CMOS and sign up. Make sure you do not miss that. Share that with your friends and family. Black Solutions. So oh, um, there's a couple of things that are going to be happening this year with regards to, you know, government orders and that sort of stuff. So what can we do with regards to the law, common law? What rights do we have? We're, we're going to bring a panel of lawyers and experts who can tell us what things, you know, we can and can't do this year with regards to law, what rights we have, what authority we're under, you know, I can't. Like, this is going to be a very powerful event. I can't really say too much about it, but you're going to have access to black lawyers so you can ask them any questions you want with regards to what's happening this year because a lot behind the scenes is happening this year, trust me. And then this one, the Secret Science of Sickle Cell, we're talking about blood, 
You're going to learn about blood on this one. This one's all about blood. So Secret Science of Sickle Cell, that's Saturday, the 6th of February. You do not want to miss that. Now, let me just show you what we've got on our website. So I'm just going to share my screen again just to show you what we've got on our website. So the link that we've been posting, which is the Linktree link, this is it here. So you've got the Black Holistic Health free lecture series. So share this with your friends and family. Secret Science of CEROS, CMOS, Black Solutions, Sickle Cell, Raise Your Vibrations. That's the lecture that I did. All of these are replays of lectures that I've done. So you guys can check out the Hidden Science of Black Music. If you want to learn about melanin, check that out. Hidden Science of Black Women's Health. Hidden Science of Ancient Kemet. If you want to learn about the pyramids, that's a powerful one. Hidden Science of Black Love. So you guys can check out a lot of previous replays. That's on the Linktree link. If you go to our website, Look at this. This is our website, the hiddenscienceacademy.com. And you can sign up as you click on membership. You can sign up as a free member or as a VIP member. If you're a free member, you get access to some of the videos. You get access to tickets once we start doing physical events again and notifications about future events. That's the free membership. Um, I suggest everyone get on. You should all be members of my academy by now. If not, sign up, get your free membership. But if you really want to take this thing seriously, if you really want to learn about your health from a black perspective, then this is the one for you. Platinum VIP membership is only $9.97 a month. So all the, oh, I can't afford your courses. That's out the window now. It's $9.97 a month. You get the e-learning course, the Black Holistic Health course. You get the White Supremacy course. You get the meal prep course. You get the pain relief. You get all of my courses are now part of this Platinum VIP membership. And it's 9.97 a month so as long as you stay subscribed you'll continuously get access to all of these things plus all the platinum videos plus vip webinars unlimited access to webinar replays like this one yeah a lot of people were saying oh the information was a bit too quick well if you're a member of the site the, the subscription you can watch this and pause and rewind and that sort of stuff and access to the black holistic health course now us as black people we need to start learning about our health from a black perspective so all of the questions you guys asked today, if you really want to start learning about your health from a black perspective, there is no miracle cure. You have to learn how your body works from a black perspective. And we've developed an e-learning course to help you. And from my studies, from my research, this is the only, the only e-learning black holistic health course in the world. And the Hidden Science Academy have it. So it's $9.97 a month, or you can pay for the whole year, £99. The last webinar that we did, quite a few of you went for this one, the, the, the yearly one. So big up the people who are really serious about turning around their health this year. $9.97 a month, that's nothing. So start learning about your health from a black perspective. Yeah. All right. So that's it from us. Big up all the people that are still on. Again, big up all the people that, you know, were part of this. So Lyndon, Ekong, and Charles. Thank you, everyone. My sister's posting her books so you guys can check out her books. Yeah. Like Sabrina says, we have to take responsibility for our own health. That's exactly it. Yeah. We have to take responsibility for our own health. And just before you lot go, because I know some of you might still have been a little bit confused about certain things. Let me just share my screen and just go over one or two things. I think this is the easiest way to understand health. And people who have been following me, you know I like to use analogy. But check this out. If you had a fish in a fishbowl and the fish was sick, what would you do? Would you treat the fish or change the water? What would be the logical thing to do? You had a fish in a fishbowl. What would be the thing to do? Treat the fish or change the water? What are the answers? The answer's coming in. Would you treat the fish or change the water? Change the water. Change the water. All change right, so everyone's <laughs> change the water because logically you know that the fish is only going to be as healthy as the water it's swimming in. Yeah. Well, use this analogy and think about your cells. The fish is your cells. The fish are your cells. The cells in your body are only going to be as healthy as the water they're swimming in. So every single one of the panelists were talking about uh, you've got a detox, change the internal environment, change the water internally. 
because this, these are your cells. Your cells are only going to be as healthy as your internal environment. So think about what you're consuming and if it's, how is it affecting your internal water? Now, that's what all the panelists said. I'll take it one step further, though. If the fish is sick, what should you do? Change the water. Well, look at the fish as yourself as well, not even yourselves, yourself, you as a human being. What's the water? Your environment. So when we talk about changing the internal environment, that's one thing we need to do, but we also need to look at the external environment, the environment that we live in here in the UK or Canada or wherever you live, that's your external environment. And that's what I kept on saying with regards to Dr. Sabi. Dr. Sabi talks about the internal environment, but he didn't grow up or live in this environment. He didn't live in this environment where there's social distancing and mask wearing and 5G and all that sort of stuff. So the environment has changed. We have to look at the environment that is making us sick as well, externally. And if you really want to learn about the external environment, you need to book onto our um, the, the subscription, 997 a month, and do the e-learning course, the Blacklistic Health e-learning course, and learn about your health from a Black perspective. Hope that makes sense. All right. So oh, big up everyone that is still here. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for joining us. I hope to see you all at the Secret Science of CMOS. That is next Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. Large up to everyone. Enough respect. I hope you got some knowledge. I hope you got some gems out tonight. All the people that had questions, they didn't get their questions answered. We're doing this every month. And join us for the CMOS one. We try and answer your questions then.